never happened. <laughs> Hopefully I sound actually decent right now. That'd be nice. If I don't, uh, then we're just going to have a nice deep voice effect going on because I don't know how to fix this. <laughs> Sounds right to me. Hey, P-Bug. Hey, everything's good. Yeah, so what happens with that? Hey, Worms, how's it going, buddy? So what happens with that mic effect is that if my mic doesn't get enough power, it will just drop my voice for some reason. I don't know why it does that. It's a really weird effect, but it happens. And it obviously leads to all sorts of fun problems. Oh, yeah, my family's doing okay. They live in El Paso, which is actually not part of the Texas power grid. Believe it or not, it's the one, like, the few parts of Texas that isn't part of that power grid, so they have not lost power at all. Uh, yeah, thoughts and prayers out with everybody who's in Texas is being affected right now. That's absolutely awful what's going on there. And, um... Yeah, that's that's a bad situation. That is a bad situation that is just happening there right now. So I'm just getting everything reset up. Once again, do apologize about this. Did not expect my mic to be stupid. <laughs> okay, we just now need to open up Emo Tracker. Get that all going. <laughs> it's, it, see, this was really great because like I had everything all set up perfectly, which means it's natural that something then immediately went wrong. Oh, now it's deciding to automatically run. Fantastic. I should have. I should have taken advantage of my new deep, sexy voice in order to do some cool things with that. The fact that I did it is a disappointment and something I will never live down. All right, look at that. It's like nothing was ever broken. J-Spot, thank you so much for the resub. Hmm. Can't get enough of your love, baby. Let's just talk real deep now for the rest of eternity. Let's try to figure out why this this window is now not as big as it used to be. All right, we're just gonna fix up a few more things and then we're gonna get started here. All right, now we just need to open up Snaz. <laughs> get our timer back up. <laughs> <laughs> how's everyone doing today? How's how's your Tuesday treating you? Mine's good. I got food poisoning yesterday, but now I'm better. And all the snow is melted. So I was actually able to, like, go places. So everything's great. All right, let's see how that works. Hey, fantastic. All right, and auto tracking should be on... I think the last thing we need to do is just fix this camera. He needs a baked salmon. Life is pretty good, all things considered. Nice. Nebraska and West Virginia are also going, having rolling blackouts? That sucks. What the heck? That does not make sense. Y'all get to see all the stuff that I do before the stream starts. So, you know, honestly, this is kind of like nice behind the scenes content y'all get in here. Oh, crazy. Anything for you, baby. <laughs> Too cold for the snow to melt here, but I had to check out for emergency cat supplies. Hmm. Feel you on that. Well, hopefully you got your cat supplies. I had to track out for food myself and Valentine's Day gifts. Oh, now my controller's all misconfigured. <laughs> Everything's going right. There we go. All right. We're good to go. This is Link to the Past. Uh, this is a Super Metroid Link to the Past randomizer. Uh, we are going to be playing a standard seed today, by the way. I am not. <laughs> but hey, you know, it works out. So this is a what's called a combo randomizer. Where 
you get basically two games put together, in this case, Super Metroid and Link to the Past, and using a wonderful bit of assembly hacking, you smash two games together and you mix up all the items in between. Managed to get all my Valentine's Day plans done? I did not. Because it literally, like, the Friday after I got my stream done, like, there was already snow in the street, and my, I drive a hybrid. Oh, yes. So, just like Link to the Past Rando, you do get uh, the ability to have different uh, different sprites. Ivan, thank you, Sports Ivan. How's it going, buddy? Thank you so much for the cheer, the 10 bits. I appreciate that. Yeah, so there's like about 128 sprites for uh, Link to the Past. What happened here? Lost input. That was cool. Uh, you only get about 10 for Super Metroid because it's a lot more complicated, but yeah, you can have Mega Man X or um, Bill Riser from Contra. Uh, Alucard's another one. It's, uh, I think there's Luigi and Link as well. Uh, sticking with Mega Man because that's the one I always use, and you kind of need to know what the hitbox looks like in Super Metroid. Whereas with uh, Link to the Past, it's all pretty uniform. They do not have Fusion Suit Samus, though so somebody's working on Zero Suit Samus right now. I wish they had Fusion Suit. Fusion Suit's great. Alright, so starting the seed, this is a standard seed, which means that all items are mixed up and all the dungeons, as far as whether or not I can have a crystal or a pendant in them, are random. But all the keys in them are going to be standard. And auto-tracking is not working. Ooh. Oh no, now auto tracking's working. It just decided not to for a second. Cool. <laughs> oh yeah, this, so there are four different portals um, uh, in this ROM hack, or in this randomizer, I guess would be more accurate to say. That allows you to transition between both games. So in this case, we went through um, a door in Criteria and ended up at the Fortune Teller's Hut in Lake Alia. So our goal at the start here is to get either 50 rupees or bombs. And we got lucky. We got bombs right away. So we don't have to really worry about anything right now. Uh, the 50 rupees is in case we don't get bombs. Because we need to buy bombs in order to get everything in Kakariko Village. So already we have probably the biggest hurdle out of the way. Oh, we also should see what's um, what we need to do. Okay, so we need to get all the crystals in the game. And it looks like we have... Oh, hey, have fun with, uh, seeing my cursor on there. Okay, so that's going to be red crystal there, so cool. Three crystals in Light World is great. This could be a very quick seed because of that. Hmm. So that's good. So yeah, the goal is to get all seven crystals and beat Ganon in Link to the Past and beat all four bosses and defeat Mother Brain in Super Metroid. And you have to do both. Can't do one or the other. Oh, wow, this is great. This seed's being very, very nice to me, apparently. We might need money if we have to go to uh, King Zora and give the man his money in order to get some progression items. It's good to have some money there. All right, so it's just missiles on top of the ledge there, so most likely don't have to defeat Agnahim, so that's good. So right now we're we're in pretty good shape. This is actually a very a seed that's being far too nice to me, actually. <laughs> that doesn't always happen. Of course, I could be speaking way too soon right now. Um, there's a good chance we may not be finding like the morph ball for a long time, or something similar. <laughs> Can you use Metroid items in Link to the Past mode? You cannot. But you can't find them in, uh... We'll grab it, because why not? You can definitely grab, like, Link to the Past items in Super Metroid and vice versa. You just can't use them. <laughs> Although that would be pretty rad if you could use the Plasma Beam in, in Link to the Past. Link probably would appreciate that, to be perfectly honest. So I'm having really weird left-right inputs on this controller. So if you see me, like, just sort of wander off... <laughs> That's why I think the connectors in my uh, Apido controller are getting a little, a little on the worn down side. 
Since it's the same controller I use to play Super Mario Maker every week. As well as pretty much everything else. Oh, are you now? Not, not bad, Kiwi. Not bad. Racking up those points. So, right now, our main goal is... Well, our main goal... Okay, well, uh... <laughs> what it, This is... This seed is scaring me. So, I was about to say our goal is to find the Morph Ball and a source of bombs. So, we can actually... This is a really nice seed. I, I cannot emphasize enough how nice this seed is. We need a Morph Ball and bo and uh, Power Bombs in order to do basically anything in Super Metroid. And sometimes that takes forever. In this case, I guess it's not going to take long at all. <laughs> we're just going to... We're just going to get those right away. In fact, we're going to get 10 Power Bombs, which is great. So Power Bomb management's not going to be much of an issue. Well, not yet. It could be an issue. Getting Pegasus Boots is great as well. Uh, Pegasus Boots may not be required to beat the game, but they're just nice as a convenience tool. Okay, well, money's not an issue either. Okay. This is great. Oh, I forgot to do one thing. How silly of me. Just add... I don't know... A minute? Two minutes to that? Um, my controller just went dead. That's a problem. <laughs> uh huh. Well. So, my controller died. <laughs> Okay, it's back. <laughs> oh, why not? Who doesn't want to be Pete? He's the ultimate hero. <laughs> yeah, he had a f he's going to farm rupees and uh, corpses of monsters and aliens. Like, have you seen that man use an axe? He probably can swing a sword as well. He's real good at that. Yeah, tell me about a J-Spot. It's the absolute worst. <laughs> I now have two Apido controllers I'm going to have to take apart and figure out what's going on. Because the B button's sticking on my other one, too. Which uh, has really, really made it so that I'm not as uh, satisfied with these controllers as I used to be. These have a... Maybe the build quality in them is not exactly the greatest. Just do bad because they feel like Super Nintendo, Nintendo controllers otherwise. The Hero of Time. Yes. The very same. So we basically got everything we need to get in Kakariko right now. There's a few other things we may need to come back for. Oh, I never... Hold on. We actually need to go back up. I forgot to give the merchant some money. We need to do that first because we have... We most definitely have 100 rupees. And we traded it for 20, so fantastic. Totally worth it. Glad to do that. Really? Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I haven't... It has some weird connection issues with my Switch as well. Like, sometimes it'll connect and it just immediately disconnect. Why am I doing that? I can get that medallion. Normally, I don't have Pegasus Boost at this point, so I'm kind of thrown off. Yeah, I, I, I should emphasize, I do have an older 8 controller. I have um, one of the older SN and SF30s, SF, SFC30s, back when they just looked like <laughs> Super Nintendo Super Famicom controllers. And before they decided that, hmm, maybe we shouldn't have them look like this. Alright, uh, just for safety reasons, we're going to go ahead and get that health. We probably don't really need it, but better safe than sorry. So after we do this, we're going to go to Mini Mortal Home Cave and get the five items that are there. 
hopefully survive long enough to get to Ice Rod Cave as well. And then we're going to go to Super Metroid, because we already have basically everything we need to do quite a bit there. So there's no point in... No point hanging out in Super Met uh, in Link to the Past for much longer. How to Ruby trade for 20? I I bought that GameStop stock and then all, all of a sudden I'm poor. That's just it's just how it works, I guess. That soldier did not like that hug, apparently. <laughs> Rinko stop stock. Exactly. You know, some people just, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, you know? One man's shovel is just another man's item check. Uh, so the shovel's not that useful. It allows us to get exactly one item check that I don't particularly feel like doing right now. So I'm just gonna have to remember that I have it. <laughs> they should have. God, Mallow. That horrifying baby creature. Who sells you incredibly good armor. Uh, let's see what the... F you know what? Out of... Just out of curiosity, I want to see what the fish gets us. So, normally a fish will give you 20 rupees in Link to the Past, but... In this case, it's 5. But, like, random drops like that are also randomized as well. Like, what you get from trees, for instance, is also randomized. So it's sometimes nice to know if you can get, like, something potentially good, like a fairy or something like that. It's like a safety measure. Alright, let's, uh, let's do this. Ah! Hmm. <laughs> okay. Just do that. Okay, we have three bombs to make this happen. <laughs> I assure you, I'm normally a lot better about hitting these mortals with bombs. Alright, there we go. And hey, we've got eight bombs for our trouble, so it works out. <laughs> exactly! Just the privilege of Kakariko Village. Look what's wrong with them? Silver arrows. Okay, this is... See, this is very scary, because right now this is turning out to be, like, the God Seed, and that is a bad thing. Because it means that, you know, near the end of this, we're gonna be... Oh, come on. Alright, well, our first death. That's fine. So we're gonna go to Ice, uh, we're gonna go to Ice Cave later, when it's just more convenient. Yeah, that's basically what's going to happen. Is we're not going to be able to find the bow for like three hours. So, fun fact. Every time you save it's in Link to the Past, it saves in Super Metroid. And every time you reset, it takes you right back to Super Metroid. So, we're just going to do that. So, right now, we can do a ton of things in Super Metroid. To start with, we're going to head down here to Teresa's room. Grab his item. And then we're gonna head down to Old Brinstar because there's a ton of things we can get down there. Yeah, Silver Arrows, once again, are incredibly good to get early on because they're very, very powerful weapons. The problem is you can't use them without a bow. And while bow is always required to beat the game, there's definitely no guarantee you'll find a bow anytime soon. Bad jump. Didn't get in a fight. I need to learn Alcatraz escape at some point. Just so I can avoid doing that. Oh yeah, the Super Met the uh, uh Mega Man X Spray is so good. It's so good. Ah, oh, I was a little short. That's embarrassing. I'm not worried about wasting power bombs right now, because we're going to have to do a refill before we go downstairs, most likely. But yeah, um, somebody did... There's, like, a lot of really good custom sprites that haven't been added yet. Like, uh, somebody did a sprite can sprite that I've actually done on... I used on stream once. That's incredibly good! Oh, it's so good! 
When you duck, he crushes himself up into a ball. Nope. Cut the corner there. So yeah, uh, going down this way, we have a ton of checks to get. Apparently, this is all going to be rupees, though. Uh, we have this check. We're going to have one where the morph ball would be. One check to our left. One where you'd get the first missile pack. So that's what? Three. We're going to have four, five. Billy's maze room is going to be six and seven. So we're going to have seven checks right off the bat. And there's 100 checks in total in Super Metroid, so coming down here is incredibly value valuable to do right off the bat. Poof. All right, Moon Pearl. Moon Pearl is one of at least two, but most likely three things we're going to need in order to get to the Dark World. So <laughs> getting that is fantastic. That's another item that sometimes it can take a while to find. So, um, yeah, once again, this is uh, turning out to be the God Seed. <laughs> Gloves are fantastic! <laughs> Gloves are also always required to beat the game. You usually find those pretty early because they're a progression item with the Titan's Mitt. It's a uh, direct upgrade. Uh, okay, just bombs so we don't have to worry about that. Spring Ball! Spring Ball is never required to beat the game, but it's great to have. Because now we don't have to rely on using um, power bombs to jump everywhere. Uh, to bomb jump, I should say. Uh, come on now. You know how to wall jump. You know how to wall jump! Yeah, no power grip. Man, the power, power grip would actually be kind of a game changer in this game. So normally you need um, either the oof. Well, you need to like jump right first off. You either need like the um, the gravity boots and high jump or the space jump in order to get to the good old Billy Maze room. But thankfully, just a running jump gets you up there with no problem. And of course, it's called the Billy Maze room because oh wait, and wait, there's more. The lamp. Wow. The lamp is also required to beat the game, and is also something, but it's re it's required to beat the game, but there's not a whole lot of instances where you need it. So it's something that takes usually forever to find. So the fact that we got this now is great. Wow, the, um, old Brinstar was completely loaded because we've got what Moon Pearl, got Moon Pearl lamp Spring Ball. And gloves? That's insane. <laughs> what a stupid seed. <laughs> this seed is absolutely dumb. <laughs> it's gonna be a really boring back half of the game, though. Because I'm literally going to be searching for, like, one or two things. Gonna be like a desperate need to find uh, the gravity suit or something like that. Oh, one good thing about having really sensitive um, left and right inputs now is that it's actually making this wall jump climb a real pain in the butt. Ah! That was actually going pretty well. It was going pretty well. There we go. Hmm. Oh yeah, I am absolutely gonna yeah, I'm absolutely gonna lie watch the Light Tell Vi's execution of Mario. That is um that is definitely going to happen. I am uh very excited to see what they're gonna have for that Nintendo Direct. So we're not going to go and refill on power bombs because we are going to be able to get a couple here coming up. Yeah, that's going to be uh, at 2 o'clock uh, Pacific time, if I remember correctly. What the hell is up with the seed? <laughs> this is... I assure you, I did not pre-plan this. Like, I didn't, like, go like, man, 
Wouldn't it be funny if we did had like a really weird seed that was like incredibly convenient to us? <laughs> like, ugh. Like this is stupid as heck. <laughs> like I'm happy, but man, big battlefield the character. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know. Um, that's a good question. I wonder who they are gonna reveal. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any particular big third-party games that are gonna be coming out soon that Nintendo's gonna just like want to grab something from. Uh, right, we need to come down here first, actually. It's good to open that door, though. So we need to refill on Power Balls really quickly, so we're gonna take a slightly unoptimal route here. I actually could see Crash. A Son Another Sonic character might also be interesting, because they did... Sega did announce they are working on new projects. Address Thompson, oh no. His final smash is the, um... Uh, the double fun thumb fisted cannon he got his his ashes shot out of. There we go. Oh no! Whew. Okay, save that. Jumped way too early. Yeah. Um. Jeez. I wonder what else they're gonna announce. Uh, I I have some plans to maybe live stream that. By the way. In the event that you want to see my hot live re and mostly muted reactions. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping they'll have, like, more announcements as far as, like, actual first-party titles. Although, it, it's saying it's going to be for the first half of uh, 2021, so... Ain't gonna lie, I'm not holding my breath for anything too major. Oop. Yeah, man, these left-right inputs are gonna really mess me up. Also, I forgot... Yeah, whatever. I was gonna try to... I was gonna try to mock ball through there, but my left and right's are really weird. Oh, you gotta work? That sucks. I mean, I technically have to work too, but... You know, it'll be fine. <laughs> I may, I may violate that rule. Oh, wait. Okay, let's, uh, let's mock ball over here and uh, see what we got. So, this is out of logic. This is, I think, our first instance of, like, really seriously going out of logic. Um, with the arguable exception of doing Billy May's room. But, um... Actually, I think that technically is in, within logic, but... Yeah, so if you use a mock ball, which is a little glitch that allows you to apply running speed to the morph ball, you can get underneath those gates and get this item without needing the speed booster. Which is good, because it's hilariously inconvenient to come here. It's going to take all the damage, don't mind me. We're doing really good as far as ammo is concerned, by the way. I actually probably would want a little bit more missiles, because eventually we are going to have to fight Fantoon. And uh, Fantoon and Super Missiles don't mix. But at least right now, we're... We're doing pretty good. Yeah, so... One reason I want to do a Key Sand DC is because... Once you get the prerequisite items, you can do a ton in Super Metroid. Uh, case in point. We're going to be basically full clearing Brinstar before doing a little bit of Norfair. <laughs> There's going to be a few items we're going to have to leave behind, but uh, not as much as you would think. I think only like two items at this point. Unless I do incredibly bad at gate skip. Don't mind me, just forgetting that that's a super missile block, not a power bomb block. Yeah, that would really be cool. I mean, companies definitely are hopping onto the. What? Okay, sure. Various suit, why not? 
Um, <laughs> what a dumb seed. This is a dumb seed. Companies are, like, hopping on the put randomizers in your game uh, train, which is really nice. Um, I actually don't have a whole lot of power bombs now. This is kind of a problem. So I'll need one to get in there. Chill out. I'll need one to get in there and then one to get out. Do I need any power bombs further than that? No, I don't. Okay. This is actually fine. Uh, yeah, Bloodstained um, has a randomizer mode, for instance. And I think one's being planned for Axiom Verge, too. There we go. That took more super missiles than it needed to. If you shoot a super missile just off screen while scrolling the camera in a in the right direction, you can actually hit the super missile block from off screen because the super missile travels so fast. It doesn't despawn before it uh, before it hits the wall like it should. It allows you to never fight uh, um, uh, Spore Spawn. That's what his name is. That idiot. So we're out of um, power bombs right now, which would normally be a problem, but it's not as big of a problem as you would think. All right, now time to do a gate clip, which... There we go. Only took three. This is another weird property of super missiles, is that they accelerate infinitely. Which means if you shoot them correctly, they'll travel so fast that they'll actually phase through walls and then explode on the other side. So you can actually shoot a super missile there and hit the other side of this gate and get in here. Bypassing the need to come back with the wave beam. I mean, stand up straight so you can see my pretty face! But yeah, I, um, for tomorrow's direct, I really hope that they do announce uh, some sort of first party tile title and whatnot. First. Oh, man. So, yeah, let me tell you. Okay, hookshot. Fantastic. This is a very strange seed. Just from top to bottom, you do not normally get these many items right at the start of the game like this. Like, to the point that I'm, like, I'm legitimately concerned for what's going to happen later. Like, we have a shocking amount of items that are required to beat the game. Like, we don't have bow, fire rod, or hammer, which are also required, but... Uh, we do have basically everything else. Yeah, we're gonna have to take a slight detour. We can't actually do anything in this room, but we can get power bombs. Oh, I found out somebody's do, um... A bunch of people are working on a minimum A press uh, task for Super Mario Brothers. Did you know you can get through uh, A2 with just with just four four A presses? It's true. Yeah, hookshot's gonna be incredibly useful. Uh, it's gonna be even more useful if one I can. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not gonna matter. I was about to say if I can get hammer, but I have mirror, so I can actually get the Tower of Hera. Oh, I can... Actually, it's really... This is really cool, because I can I can show off a really cool glitch in Tower of Hera, too. That's unnecessary, but it's cool regardless. But it, Hook Truck's going to allow me to get to the right side of Death Mountain early, which will allow me to get seven more items. Unless I jump bad. Oh, really? Is that so? That's pretty rad, Worms. Hey, Red Place! How's it going? Also, yes, Super Metroid, but more! <laughs> it's a Super Metroid Link to the Past randomizer. Ooh, a bottle. Fantastic. A bottle allows us to get one of the final items of Kakariko Village from the sick kid. Uh, you need to have a bottle in order to give for him to give you the bug net, or in this case, something that's not going to be the bug net, but hopefully useful. Huh. That is really cool that somebody has put together a level editor. Is it just for the original Mega Man Zero, or is it Apple Cool amongst all four games? Oh, that sucks! Zero three? Okay, so the right Zero game. 
All right, let's go say hi to our friend, Kraid, before we basically go back to Link to the Past. I'm good. Yeah, uh, today was a good day. Had to drive to work and get my computer because they took away our offices. But then told us to take, away our, take home our desktop computers, which felt like I was stealing something, but whatever. But other than that, it was, it's been good. I, I suffer. I'm over my food poisoning too, which is awesome. <laughs> Had really bad food poisoning yesterday, which my poor girlfriend felt so bad about. Uh, Mini crate there is really nice. He always drops. Well, he doesn't always, but he's very likely to drop five super missiles. He sometimes will not, and will just only drop one. It's very sad. All right. Let's say, uh, let's say hi to everyone's friend. Oh, it was uh, some Italian food. It was uh, some gorgonzola pasta. Which was... Uh, it's too bad. It was really good. And then it was really not. Oh, no! I actually got the quick kill! I was so not expecting to get the quick kill. And then I messed up and didn't get the quick kill. Oh, I am so sad. Oh, and then I completely biffed it there. This is a disaster, everybody. I wasn't going for the quick kill. Because <laughs> I never get the quick kill. And then I almost got the quick kill. Don't you love it when you almost accidentally do the speedrun strat? Oh, isn't that lovely? Well, our first boss in Super Metroid down. Yeah, that was a that was a sloppy crate fight, but crate is so easy that even a sloppy crate fight you get through in like zero seconds. Oh wait, what am I doing? I forgot I had to kill you guys. My combo rando skills are a little bit rusty, as you could probably imagine. I haven't uh, I used to play this a little bit more regularly on stream. But uh it has been a has been a hair or two. Another good place to restock on power bombs, although we don't have a ton, so it's not a big deal right now. Really, at this point, power bomb management's not gonna be a big issue. Especially now that we have Spring Ball. Okay. Alright, so the plan is, is we're gonna do just one or two checks in Norfair. Because we actually can't do much in Norfair right now without either a high jump, Morph Ball Bomb, Space Jump, or the Speed Booster. Because we actually cannot get to the right side. But we can still do these checks that are over here. Which is certainly better than nothing. Okay, um... I actually can now beat Desert Palace because I have a Fire Source... Oh, Progressive Shield as well. I have a Fire Source and I have Book now so I can actually access it. So that's kind of nuts. So I can now beat two dungeons in... That are both Crystal Dungeons in... Link to the past. That's kind of crazy. Oh. I forgot a key thing you need to do. You need to kill this guy. Otherwise you can't get out of the room. That's why I tried to run in there and kill him really quickly. And then immediately forgot to shoot the door. Whoops. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so there's our Fantoon access right there. So we know that we're unlikely to have be able to access Fantoon until we get one of those items that I've already mentioned. Uh, not, not a whole lot. I found my Fantoon access, which was nice. But other than that, nothing crazy. Uh, Grapple Beam is in... is on the other side of the gate in Norfair. So... Just something for me to keep in mind. May not be something I'll actually need, but... If I do, I at least know where it is. Usually you don't need Grapple Beam to beat the game. Though occasionally you do. 
Alright, so let's see what we have in the dark world. Wow. Really? Hi, say hello once again to the legit one of the best seeds in the game. So, uh, Turtle Rock is a pendant. I... Skull Woods is our other red crystal. Our other pendant is going to be Swamp Palace. And Green Pendant is going to be Misery Mire. So that essentially means that Ice Rod's not going to be required to beat the game. And the two most annoying dungeons we don't even have to touch at all. That's... That's uh, ridiculous. <laughs> Nothing else to say. It's just ridiculous. We can't actually get what's on the tablet here, but with the book, we can at least check what it is. So we're just going to go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, it's just money, so we don't have to worry about it. Yep. You're probably... You are probably right. Turtle Rock actually is scary to be a pendant dungeon for precisely that reason, because there's a ton of checks in there, and they're deep in the dungeon. So it's very well possible that... Um, we're not going to have the item that we need. Mmm! Is, is it because it is? <laughs> I mean, Link to Pass is great. It established a lot of precedent, like, a lot of systems and precedents that, um, are in the Legend of Zelda series in general. Okay, so, I know where the big key is. The big key is going to be downstairs, but I don't want to do that. And the reason being is because it's slow. But you're probably saying, yo, one more time, you can't actually get upstairs without the big key. And let me tell you, you were wrong. Yes, you can. Let me introduce something called Harapot. Okay. Ooh, I was off. Okay, let's try that again. I think I, had, I needed to be one more up. So Harapot is a technique where you use a bomb to clip yourself into the pot. Unless you are lining yourself up completely wrong. Oh, no. Hmm. Did I forget where to properly align myself? I don't think I did. Ooh, maybe I did. Uh, okay, well, we only really got one more good opportunity to pull off Aeropot. Could have sworn this is the right tile. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. Oh, well, I have to go downstairs now, so... So much for that! So much for me trying to be a cool guy. Hmm. Fair enough, you know. Not every not every Zelda game is gonna be everybody's cup of tea. I I grew up with this game, so I, I absolutely love it. See, so yeah, hair pot allows you to clip in that pot and uh, warp all the way to the top of the Tower of Hera, and lets you skip doing this incredibly slow thing. Unfortunately, my positioning was just slightly off, and I don't quite have enough health to just keep doing that over and over. Also, apparently the blue mail only changes one subtle thing about uh, Pete's palette. And that's his scarf. It's not red anymore. Alright, what's her job? Okay, five rupees. I hope it does. That'd be pretty great. Oh, man. I would hope that there would be some either Metroid or Breath of the Wild 2 news. But since they are saying it's only going to be... It's for re releases that are going to be out in the first half of 2021. Um, I'm not particularly confident about that. Oh, man. These diagonals are killing me. But yeah, that's, that's what I would want. That... 
That would be cool, but I would highly doubt that. Mario's Time Machine 2. I'd be down with that. Play the hell out of Mario's Time Machine 2. I bet you're gonna... You know what I bet you're gonna say? I bet you're gonna be like, and now Mario 35 is gonna be available forever. <laughs> We're not actually going to kill it. Yeah. When you remember that they did that, it makes you go like, oh, they're not gonna... You're not gonna hear about anything about that anytime soon, are you? Map. Oh, yeah, okay, so I could have guessed that, actually. That's gonna be map. The boss is gonna be compass. <laughs> oh, man, what if they did? Deep Six Mario now. You might! It's been a while since Luigi's Mansion. And they were officially bought by Nintendo. So I could totally see him see him having a new project. By the way, would you like to know how Mordorm works? Mordorm moves randomly, f like, turns randomly four times. And then on his fifth uh, turn, he just, like, goes directly at you. So he's not completely random. He's just mostly. Man, if we get another Mario Strikers, that'd be cool. New Super Metroid Prime 3D All-Stars featuring Metroid Prime 1 and 2 and 4 DP. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Metroid Prime 3 is a good game. It's better than 2. <laughs> Alright, so we got our first, uh... First crystal. Not bad. Alright, so next we're gonna head over to the right side here, because we can get a ton of items. And then I guess we're gonna go to Desert Palace, because there's no reason not to at this point. Oh, man, that'd be cool. Like, in a way that I can't imagine Nintendo being cool. I think you need to bomb that, right? Yeah. Can't bonk it. Ooh, Ice Rod, which is not necessary. And Powder, which is great. Powder is pretty much never needed to beat the game. But Powder is so useful. It is so insanely useful. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Good luck with your drive. Oh man, that hot behind the back boomerang I just did. You know you love that skill. So, actually we got a decent amount of items over here. That probably goes a long way. Uh, I mean, nostalgia plays a lot of factors in some of the old games. Like, you know, games have evolved for a reason, and they've gotten better. And while some games, I feel like, have aged incredibly well, like, for instance, I think Mega Man X, the Mega Man, a lot of Mega Man games have aged well, or Super Mario World, definitely some games haven't. Hmm. Like, I actually don't think the original Mario Kart's aged well. I think they've made it a lot better. Okay, so just a hard piece up there. Now get out of my way. So we're gonna check what's in here and then save quit and go to Desert Palace. Because there's literally no reason for us not to. And also we need to... Oh, actually, we're gonna do another set of checks first. Because we can. So there's no reason for us not to... No, we're gonna go... Nah, you know what? Actually, no. We're gonna go pure speed. And pure speed dictates that we don't go to Hyrule Castle. Pure speed dictates that we go... We go to Desert Palace, and we hope we get progression items there. Even though the odds are very bad for that. Since there's only gonna be, like, three checks in total. If we don't find anything we need for... Uh, Super Metroid or Link to the Past progression... Really, I'm hoping for Super Metroid progression at this point. 
uh, we're gonna go and uh, do those Hyrule Castle checks. We also have to think about going to Easter Palace as well, because we, while we can't beat the dungeon, we can basically full clear it. All right, what's on ledge? Ledge is uh, money, so who cares? All right. I don't know what game for y'all childhood do you feel like hasn't aged particularly well? In the meantime, uh, Desert Palace has two checks in total to do. Ooh, eight bombs. Uh, normally, it requires really only the uh, uh, the gloves and a fire source in order to beat. Though sometimes a can also require the the Pegasus boots as well. It depends if the big key is on the on the uh, torch. In a room to our left. Mario Party 1? I think I would agree with you on that one. And so Pegasus Boots weren't required. Interesting. Super Mario Kart, agreed. I'm not sure Donkey Kong 64 was good in the first place, to be honest, but it definitely has not aged well. I think it definitely... It, it's all the worst excesses. Which... Given I have some stream plans involving Donkey Kong 64, uh, looking forward to that one. Mario Kart 64. Um, I don't know. I think I would agree with you on that. I think I think Mario Kart 64 is still a good game, but I don't think it's aged well. Like a game, a game can age poorly, but still. Why am I going there? Oh right. What have I gotten? Okay, so there's one more check left. Like, a game can age poorly, but still be good. Hmm. Do I agree with that? I think I agree with that. I think the aesthetics of F-Zero have aged wonderfully. I think the gameplay, though, I agree. Hmm. Now, F-Zero GX. Still fantastic. All right, so we still have one more check to find in here. I should mention, like, what's exactly in dungeons. So in a non-key sandy seed, just a standard seed, I guess you could also call it, um, all keys, big keys, maps, and compasses are going to be in the respective dungeon. They'll just be, like, mixed up within the different chests, which can cause some interesting things to occur. could cause some routes that would normally be viable to be, well, not viable or require additional items to actually beat. Like, Ice Palace can actually require King of Samaria to beat, depending on how the keys are distributed. And subsequently not require a uh, hookshot. So, it goes both ways. But because of that, you can actually make some educated guesses. Like, if you have two chests left, and you haven't gotten the map and compass, you know you don't have to go for those chests at all. Hmm. That aged better than what I expected. I think uh, River City Ransom has aged incredibly well. In a way that I feel like is unreasonable. Because it's a beat-em-up from the 80s. Hmm. I never liked any of the Hotshot Golf game. Even though I always liked, the, um, I always liked their sister series, uh, Mario Golf. When Back when Camelot did both. Oh man, this is such a slow way to fight them, but I don't, I don't have a better item. Cause I don't I don't think they're affected by ice rod. It actually might be. Let's test it out. You affect are you hurt by ice rod? You are. Oh, okay, never mind. Fire rod does a ton of damage to them. They did, yes. Uh, first couple of hot shots. Son of a what? <laughs> okay, so now we have Fantoon access. So we... 
Do we have fan? We don't have Fantoon access. I lied. Hmm. Okay, so this this leads to some interesting interesting options because we could technically dip into Meridia a little bit in Super Metroid. I don't think that's worth it personally. So I'm going to do some ancillary checks because we can only really get one, two, I think three items there. Whereas we can get a ton more this way. And since we know where Grapple Beam is, we know that we would be basically reliant on finding Space Jump with those three checks in order to do anything more in Meridia. Or I guess technically bombs if we got, if we got Morph Ball bombs. Yeah, Mario 3 and Mega Man and most Mega Man are so good, yeah. Like if they didn't hold up, you would actually be legit surprised. Yeah, like the lot pretty much the entire Mario series I get. I um I I kinda take for granted how good they are. Spacer. So, a whole lot of nothing, although Spacer is just kind of a useful quality of life item. Since it makes your beam a little bit stronger. So, I'm not I'm not inherently upset that I got that. So, the main thing I want right now is basically either Space Jump high or High Jump. And really, the answer is going to be Space Jump. Because that will give me access to Norfair and will give me ax it'll give me greater access in Meridia. What's your favorite hidden gem of a game? Good question. I was about to say Pilot Link 64, but I'll but it is an into the first party game, so I don't know if I would call that a hidden gem per se. Uh gimmick is really good. Do love me some gimmick. Hmm. Played have like a ton of games too. So I'm trying to think I'm trying to like sort in my head what would technically be considered a hidden gem versus not, right? Um Cybernator. There we go. Cybernator is an incredibly good mech game. It's a, well, a side-scrolling platform that masquerades as a mech game for the Super Nintendo. And it has a pseudo-sequel, Sorts, that's an RPG that's also a front mission spin-off. That was also for the Super Nintendo. It's incredibly good. Um, called Front Mission Gun Hazard. Um... I think it is nowadays, because they haven't done anything with um, Puzzle League slash Panel the Pond. So, I would not argue with that one. Oh, this is slower. I should have just went over there and just slashed the sword. Fire Rod, fantastic. Okay, I'm glad I did this. Uh, Fire Rod's not going to really do much for us right now. But it is nice to have. Oh, Journey of Solace is great. Never played much of Scat, though. Tetris Attack, though, is my favorite puzzle game of all time. And I'm really happy they threw Panel of the Pond onto the um, Super Nintendo. Nintendo's Super Nintendo on Nintendo Switch Online. There we go. That, there's the name. In a way, that's kind of surprising. Like, I don't know why they would do that and not just put Tetris Attack on there. Okay, so that wasn't worth it, but whatever. Okay, I... Hmm. We are going to head over to our right and go to Eastern real quick. Oh, wait. Um, hold on. We're going to save and quit again. Actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to fake flippers and go go see King Zora. Because I don't want to go in Eastern Palace until I get the bow, because it's just going to make it easier. 
Um, easier in the sense of I'll be able to beat it and not have to go back. So that's sort of easier. Oh, we also need to go to... Um, we, gotta, we gotta go to Ice Cave. I forgot about that. I forgot that we didn't do that because we died. Uh, we should do that first. Let's see, we're gonna do that first. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, it's so good. Puzzle League is so good. Yeah, one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games is the Puzzle League Dr. Mario combo pack. It's real, real good. I should do a stream where we throw down online uh, Battle of the Pond. Okay, so that wasn't really worth it, but whatever. More health is never a bad thing. Alright, so let's go ahead and fake flippers. Yeah. There we go. So fake flippers is an interesting little glitch you can do. If you jump off a ledge and screen, uh, screen transition at the same time you hit the water. Please get in, please get in there. Thank you. <laughs> And it allows you to swim without flippers. It also allows you to do some other really silly things as well. That we're going to soon see. Now, this is in combination with another very silly glitch involving the Moon Pearl. Allows you to walk on water. It also allows us to get these two things in here. Which aren't useful, but whatever. I am not shocked by that. My sister and I had some very heated Tetris Attacks matches back in the day. Alright, so our objective here is to two things. One, it's not to accidentally walk on land. Walking on land gets rid of fake flipper status. And I want to keep it, just to be quick. The second is not to get hit over, uh, over deep water, because otherwise I automatically die in order to prevent a soft lock. Useless! Alright. That was not worth it at all. <laughs> but I at least got to show off cool glitches. Hmm. Yeah, I've... I grew up with the Metroid series, so I... basically played every one of them at release, with the exception of the original. The original I came to later, but... Uh, you're not missing much by this is by skipping the original Metroid. I'll say that much. I enjoyed it when I played through it on the Game Boy Advance, <laughs> but it's a, it's a thoroughly obtuse game. Okay, nope, no. Nope. I'm not really expecting anything particularly great from any of these chests, but still. Take care, Kiwi. It's good to see you, buddy. Hope you have a good rest of your evening, okay? Alright, um... What else could I possibly get right now in Super Metroid? Really not much. I can't do Gauntlet right now. I really can't go to Fantoon. I can't go... And I can't do Sucking Highway. Hmm. Yeah, so I think this is the right move. Super, uh, original Metroid's not bad if you have a map, but yeah, if you're trying to play that blind, uh, first off, good luck. Second of all, you're in for a bad time. Oh no, this random bombable wall half, like, three-fourths of the way up this shaft leads to five missile pickups that are going to be necessary to beat the game. Because you literally need, like, 120 missiles to beat the game. Oh no, I died. Now I have 30 health. <laughs> and I'm starting in Norfair. It is a hateful game, I swear. Hmm. So, I am a big key short right now. I 
We got what? One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Four checks left. And that means there's gonna one, be one more item in here. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, fun fact about that room. Normally four skeletons are supposed to to spawn, but if you're exact with your movements, you can actually only cost two of them to spawn. Also, the second they spawn, they don't appear immediately, but their hitboxes are there, so you can just hit them. Boo! I was hoping that'd be an item. Because that means I have to go down here. I, I really liked Zero Mission, but it is definitely the inferior of the two GBA Metroid games. I did like how they took some lessons they learned from... Uh, what's it called? Super Metroid by making it more um, more open. And allow you to do like a bunch of weird skips and all that. Like, I thought that was cool. We got plenty of health. That's nice. Um, I'm gonna do one more check. And then we need to sit down and think. Oh, actually this is good. I forgot. I I forgot that I have a shovel. Look at how look at how much like items we have in our inventory. <laughs> and then marvel with how little we can actually do with them in super in a uh, link to the past. In large part because we don't we don't have a hammer. <laughs> if we had a hammer. We would be basically beating the vast majority of Link to the Past right now. Oop, I was facing left. I don't know if I love Fusion more than Super Metroid, but boy, it's a great game. I will not question you on that. Fusion has a mood to it that I really like. It captures the horror aspect of um, Super Metroid almost perfectly. Arguably even better. Yeah, it has, it has crazy good atmosphere. Uh, so I'm coming up here just to say hi to Sick Kid. Okay. All right. So one thing we do have is we do have Aga access. We can access Aga him. The thing I'm trying to remember is can we reflect shots back with just the regular sword? If we can, that's the play. If it isn't, we need to go back to Super Metroid most likely. This is something I honestly don't remember. So I need to take a look at this real quick. Yeah, so this is actually going to be the first time I've ever run into this situation, which is going to be a lot of fun. So apparently, yes, you can. Okay. So that's the play. So this turns out this is indeed an Aga Seed. How interesting. I like Super Metroid's controls better in Fusion, but I had to admit, you have to, like, wrestle with Super Metroid's controls for a little bit before you really get used to it. Like, it, it fights you every step of the way, but once you learn it, like, learn how, like, Samus moves around, like, wall jumping and all that, oh, you feel so great. It feels so good. Like, in a way that uh, Fusion does not. Not to say that Fusion Control is bad. So, 
Normally, you need to have the Master Sword in order to get through here. But what if I told you I had a cape and I could just walk in? I guess that's what would happen. Ow. So yeah, uh, by defeating Agonim here, we're gonna get Dark World access. It's, uh... It's a thoroughly annoying way to get Dark World access, but it, it is Dark World access. Um, this will allow us... And since we have Hookshot and all that, we're gonna be able to do pretty much everything we need to do. So that's good. We can actually travel all around the map. In ways that... I'm not 100% certain were intended. But I guess it doesn't really matter. Ow. Ow. Just gonna... Don't mind me, just gonna run into everything. Just gonna... Ow. Fun fact, normally you don't need to come here, but if you do a key sanity seed, this actually becomes a surprisingly important place. Because both of those chests contain items. Since the keys in them will be moved out of them. See, so yeah, I wasn't aware that you could actually reflect uh, Agnihim's shots back with just the. So something really fun happened there. Do you all want to know what the fun thing that happened was? The fun thing that happened is that I got hit while I was off-screen. <laughs> that can happen! <laughs> Some really, like, really weird things can happen with that, too. Like, you can... You can actually get, like, really messed up by wall masters that way. Where you could, like, fall down a hole and in mid-transition be taken up to heaven. And back to the start of, uh... Start of this, uh, start of the dungeon. Hey, High Life, what the fun happened? The fun that's happened is that we got, like, a shocking amount of good items. And then that got tempered by... Now we have to go defeat Agnihim in order to get Dark World access. be incredibly careful right now because I have no health. Yay! Okay, I got health. Yay! Yeah, some slightly sloppy play going on here. I can't blame all on my controller. Alright, so... Just go away. All right, let's say hi to Agnihim. All right, so fun stuff. All right, so we need to hit Agnihim six times. Let's see if we can do that without getting too many blue balls. Alright, so far so good. We're on pace for the two cycle. And goodbye two cycle. Oh, actually no, wait. I thought he did it three times. Okay, well the two cycle's definitely dead now. Because every four times he's gonna go up to the top. And he does a new cycle. Watch it! I guess we could still technically get a two cycle, couldn't we? Now we can't. Hey, Oki! It's going pretty darn good. Well, it was going good until Agnihim decided not to cooperate. 
Hmm, good question. Probably would want to put something on there that most people haven't played, like Terra Enigma. Or, like, some other, like, Quintet game. My normie opinion would be Final Fantasy V, because I really love that game. Oh yeah, there was a Super Nintendo Shadow Run, wasn't there? I always think of that as a Genesis game. Alright, cool. So, Dark World. Um, right now we can't do anything in Palace of... Well, we can't do much in Palace of Darkness, so we're not going to go there. Ooh, we have Norfair access now. Fantastic. Oh, Chrono Trigger. Yeah, Chrono Trigger would be great. Would not say no to Chrono Trigger. So I could go to Catfish, but Catfish is going to take a while. So instead, we're just going to head over to the village. Hmm, he says. Realizing he doesn't have a whole lot of supplies to work with. Oh. Actually, really convenient that we're heading around this way. So normally, I don't get these checks, like, right off the bat, but due to lovely sheer luck, we can actually get these. There's two checks here in the graveyard. First here in King's Tomb, and there's going to be one on the ledge. Usually these are so out of the way that there's it's never worth getting, but because we have to head this way to, in order to get to Thieves Town, just kind of worthwhile to do so. <laughs> F-Zero is a fantastic RPG. <laughs> this is very true. I would really like Robotrek. Robotrek would be a cool game on the Super Nintendo. It's a pretty ridiculous robot building RPG. Hmm. We got plenty of missiles, I guess. That's better or nothing. Oh, live a live would be cool. Oh, no worries, Oki. Okay, I'm happy to explain. So this is the Super Metroid Link to the Past randomizer. It is a randomizer that combines both, well, Super Metroid and Link to the Past. It puts four different portals in each game, so you can go between one and the other. The goal here is to defeat both Ganon and Mother Brain. And all items, with the exception of keys, big keys, maps, and compasses, are going to be um, mixed up between the two different worlds. So you could find, say, power bombs here, just like you saw on that ledge in Link to the Past, or you could find the mirror in Super Metroid, which we did. And there's a logic that's underlying everything in order to allow you to... Beat, the, beat these games without too much difficulty. Or do so in the way you wouldn't get stuck anyways. So yeah, requires some pretty good in-depth game knowledge and whatnot. Which thankfully I have. Okay, so far nothing there. Our plan here is we're... Because Thieves Town is a crystal, yeah. Our plan is to do the Thieves Town and then do... The other dungeon, <laughs> uh, Skull Woods. Skull Woods I'm a little scared about right now. Because I don't have a whole lot of magic. Cana Samaria. Interesting. Why isn't this updating? Update. Hmm, did the script get broken? Uh, I might have to start manually updating. That sucks. Yeah, it, it is kind of wild. Apparently, I... Morph Ball Bombs. Interesting. Uh, I actually don't like seeing that right now. Okay, let's go ahead and manually update this. Because it's not... It's, it's not being friend anymore. It's saying it's auto-tracking should be working. And yet it's not. Uh, is there anything else on here that it's missed? It doesn't look like it. Hmm. Oh, well, maybe I'll pick up again somehow. Uh, apparently, it just happened to be very convenient how this even came together in the first place. 
Uh, okay, we need to go to Thieves Town. In the sense that apparently the memory banks um, on both cartridges were written in such a way that it was very easy to combine them. Like, it's a little reductive, but like, the everything was coded for Super Met. Oh, thank god. I don't have to worry about more fall bombs now. I was getting really scared. I was gonna have to like morph ball bomb my way through. Um, uh, what should I call it? Uh, lower Norfair. That's not the case. But yeah, they were arranged in such a way they're like you know, linked to the past, like memory. Uh, written memory was on one side, and uh, Super Metroid was the other, so it was easier to combine them. And they've done a lot of work since then. Uh, besides, oh look at that, I'm the dog. Woo! Fantastic. That dog's my friend. Especially since said dog could be in the original Harvest Moon. You could show that dog to any lady. And you could literally make them love you in one day. Because it doesn't register as a gifted item. But it increases their mood. Oh. Need to go one up more. But yeah, I'm happy, always happy to give explanations about what's going on here because it is complicated and I love explaining it. So, the fact that we got essentially uh, Norfair access and um, not only Norfair access but also um, Wreck Ship access, we're going to go back to Super Metroid after this. And the reason is honestly one of safety. We're not in the world's greatest shape to do Skull Woods because we don't have a whole lot of magic. And we don't have... A right. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of ways of defeating Mothra without the Fire Rod. Because Regular Sword actually does not hurt Mothra. And if I, which means if I run out of magic, uh, it will be an instant game over. So I'm gonna I'm gonna choose the play it safe. Okay, so every item left in here is a check, which is kind of bad because I don't have hammer. So I'm gonna have to miss out on one of them. Oh, that's not true. Um, there's still a, there's still a key floating around, so there's two checks left. We're gonna hope the key is in the big chest. That way I don't have to keep this place in mind and come back with the uh, the hammer. Yeah, there are so many different things you have to do and so many different routing options that I really, really love it. Uh, the key sandy seeds are particularly crazy because they introduce keys to to Super Metroid in order to lock different areas. Um, with each area, most areas, I should say, having two keys now and a boss key. And that introduces a lot of like crazy routing options because of that. Which is nuts in of itself. Like, I've had to do some really crazy stuff. Charge Beam! Charge Beam's great! I'm glad I have Charge Beam! Yeah, I, the plan actually was to do a Key Sandy Sea, because we were supposed to do this over the weekend, but... Um, a mountain of snow and my want to see my girlfriend uh, meant that we kind of had to delay plans until today. Maybe. It's not a bad idea, actually. So, fun fact about Blind. Blind is on a script. Blind will always will do the same thing every time. We're gonna play it safe, though, with her real quick. There we go. Uh, so, I kind of let the fight get off script, and so it was a little messed up. Okay, great, the key's in the big chest. You need to hit blind nine times with any item that damages her. And the way her fireballs work is that the... I think four of them shoot randomly, and then one always shoots towards you. And that includes her heads that pop off. So you can actually do the same movement and have the exact same fight every time. Which is great, because otherwise it's a very dangerous fight. Okay, so... Do I want to do what Perry suggested? Is that good? Uh, 
Um, no, I'm not going to. Because we're not going to go directly back to... We're not going to go directly back to Super Metroid. I forgot that there's actually a ton more checks we can do. And he evolved going down here. Which means I would have to double back from Skullwoods, which is a little time consuming. And there's only two checks you can get in Skullwoods. So if I wanted to get essentially everything I possibly could... Ooh, good luck. Everything I possibly could get... It could be a little time consuming to do that and then double back. Now, if I could beat the dungeon, obviously this would be different, but I can't. Ho my hope, though, is I'll get, um, I'll get Titan's bit soon, or Hammer. And it'll make uh, backtracking back up there not that bad. Because I, I do acknowledge that this is a... Oh, right, I forgot I had to update this now because auto-tracking is broken. Oh, I got Charge Beam as well. Darn you, Auto Tracker. Darn you. Oh, we got these channel right, though. It, it, it did update that. How strange. Huh. I don't... I don't understand. Okay, so it's, it's working again, but not really. Really, the time difference of whether or not I go to School Woods now or not is probably negligible now that I think about it. I think my logic is that I'd rather just get it done in one swoop. Which I could technically do so if I get kind of lucky. I'm a little bad about fighting Mothra. Oh, but if I did that, then I could have gotten the big bomb and checked Pyramid. Ah. Okay, I should have. Um, do I want it? Is that even worth it? Okay, we're gonna go check it. We're gonna go check the tablet up here, even though I can't get it. We're gonna continue the game. <laughs> this won't take too long to do. What do we got? Okay, missile. So we don't have to worry about that. So, none of the tablets are worthwhile. Which is good. So now it's time to go to Hype Cave. And Hype Cave is named as such because there's a good chance we're going to get some real good stuff because there are five checks in there. And it usually happens at a late enough point in the game that items that you need are going to be located there. It's actually a little less valuable in in Super Metroid Link to the Past Rando, I found. Just because you have just a higher volume of checks with the additional 100 checks you get with Super Metroid, but still usually worth checking out. See, I got 20 rupees. Totally worth it. Well, not great, but I'm not upset either. Okay. Okay, time to save and quit and go back to Super Metroid. So, hmm. What is the best thing to do? If I go directly to... Oh, mm, we should refill our stuff. Oh, right, I can. Right, I forgot I could do that. Okay, so I'm trying to think if it's better to go to Norfair or if is it better to go to Wreck Ship. Wreck Ship, I can't get everything. Um, I'm going to be missing one item. Now I can check to see what that item is, which is good, but I, I can't get it because I don't have a uh, speed booster. Norfair, though, there's a possibility I won't need to do anything in there. And I could just go straight to... Ooh, that poor guy had a bad day. Uh, we'll go ahead and collect it. Yeah, there's a possibility that I'm not going to need anything in there. But, on the flip side, I would rather have, like, 
Either a, the plasma beam or just a few more super missiles if I'm going to go down and fight Ridley and lower. So it's kind of a wash, is what I'm trying to say. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go direct ship first. And then we'll go ahead and double back. I think that will be the best move. Okay, what's up here for... Ah! Bad jumping. Okay, just a, just a piece of heart there. So, nothing to get excited about. And there's also another item here that's in the water, but we'll... There's going to be a more convenient time to grab that. So we're going to wait till then. And hey, welcome to Wreck Ship. Probably, the, I would argue, the moodiest part of the game. I don't know, maybe the Sarah Station is pretty moody, actually. It's definitely one of my personal favorite areas. Yes. On one hand, this doesn't justify my decision to go into, um... Uh, it's Eastern now, but... <laughs> Getting bow is fantastic! By the way, this actually doesn't help our Mothra problem either, because Mothra is immune to the bow <laughs> in Silver Arrows. Mothra's one of the few bosses that does not take damage from, uh, from bow. <laughs> Just too bad. Yes, he does! And he even has his, like, his crystal and all that, too, if you notice. Like his head crystal. It's kind of cool. Alright, we're in great shape to fight Fantoons. So this should not be dangerous. So watch me mess up really badly. Ah... So sometimes he'll stay on screen a little bit longer and you can actually hit him. Uh, in that case, no. And he's giving me a pretty slow pattern. Okay. Ooh, okay, that was really good. That was really good. We got five hits on there. Um, the Fantoon Quick Kill involves you just dumping missiles into him right there in a very specific cadence while moving forward. That I have never been able to pull off successfully. But what I did is a kind of a good backup. Only got one there. Okay, so five, four. If I get another five, we might be able to do a four cycle. Yeah, never. If you want to have a bad time, uh, I'm not sure if hitting a super missile is going to be a good idea now. If y'all want to have a bad time, hit him with a super missile. If you do that, he becomes invincible, flies up to the top of the screen, and rains fire down on you for about a minute. That, um, at the point of the game that you're supposed to fight him, or supposed to fight her, uh, can actually be incredibly dangerous. Because it requires incredibly precise jumps in order to not get hit. Yeah, so, five cycle, unfortunately, but... That's okay. Five cycle with slow patterns. Good news is that this should be a dip. <laughs> he flew. She flew up. How rude. She flew up. Oh, man. There we go. Yeah, so you always, you always leave that super missile for the last hit. So, that was a good Fantoon fight that turned into a bad Fantoon fight. This is unfortunate. Fantoon's been something I've been meaning to practice, though. Alright, so time to almost full clear. Oh yeah, no, it hasn't updated. So strange. Hmm. Auto tracking. Do me. You need to do me a solid. Come on now. Right. Oh. 
Lost focus. Yeah, so thankfully it's pretty easy to completely clear out good old, uh, good old wreck ship. So this shouldn't take long. We're going to be taking a save up here real quickly. And the reason being is because there's an item that's on the far right of the wreck ship that's a little time consuming to get and time consuming to backtrack from. It's not worth leaving a well alone. Not usually, anyways. But it is definitely time consuming to backtrack from. So, it's best to just take a save here and do your check. Although, granted, with the pace I have, ugh, part of me actually is wondering if I should skip it, because like, I'm I'm making a, an absurd time right now. Absurdly good time. Oh, I should have jumped. That was a mistake. Oh, well. No biggie. If I didn't have, um, have gravity suit there, that would that would actually have been a problem. I'm starting to get used to my funky diagonals now, too. Getting used to this, um, worn down D-pad. Um, that's not worth it. Had to think about it, but we actually have probably more E-Tanks than we're going to ever need. So we'll just go ahead and reset. Like, if I had one less E-Tank than I have currently, I probably would have, but I... I have not only have that e six E tanks or seventy e tanks. Um, okay, we're just gonna just do this. Get out of here. Not only do I have the seven E tanks, I also have uh, two reserves as well. So I'm in. I'm in kind of ridiculous shape. Okay. Um, I think that's it for the enemies over here. Yeah. So, this is a room of flock doors, so I need to clear out all the enemies first. And I'm doing it in the specific order that I'm... that I want to, want to do them in, because I want to be able to have all doors remain open. Because we are ultimately going to want to go to our left, but there's a check to our right. But if there's a flashing door that you don't open, it becomes locked the second you re-enter the room, and you have to redo everything. Just little, little optimizations like that. Another optimization is having enough missiles that you can just punch these guys back. Plasma! Oh, that is great. So this was the right play. Coming here first was the right play. Uh, plasma's fantastic. Um, it means Meridia is going to be basically a non-issue once we're able to really get into that. And, um... It's also gonna, like, really severely help us out in Lower Norfair as well. It's technically faster to continue flying over there, but I like playing it safe. Ooh! I want... Master Sword! Fantastic. Uh, Master Sword is required to beat the game. Full stop. Uh, you cannot damage Ganon with otherwise. So, or at least in his first form. I mean, second form, you also still need a Master Sword, but my point being. So, yeah, getting that is great. Uh, swords, alongside shields and gloves, are what's considered, and uh, males, uh, Link's armor, are what are we call progression items. And the randomizer is set up in such a way that you always get the um, get them in levels. So you always will get the fighter sword first, then the master sword, then the tempered sword, then the gold sword. Uh, that way you don't accidentally get the gold sword and then get the fighter sword, and all of a sudden you may end up being like soft locked or something like that. It's 
This is also like an area where this randomizer differs from the um, A Link to the Past randomizer, the non-combo randomizer. Because the combo, uh, the regular randomizer actually has uh, Silver Arrows be a progression item. Hmm. So I made a slight mistake. I forgot to check what the item is up there. And I'm not sure if there's actually a good way of being able to check it, but we're gonna... We're gonna try to figure out something. Um... You need to jump quicker. Ugh. It's gonna flip back. Okay, good. So that was the, um, that was the item that we needed the speed booster to get. But thankfully, it's just a hard piece, so I don't care. So yeah, we have just full clear direct ship. I'm sorry, correction. We have just cl full clear direct ship. Unless you count the item that's gonna we're gonna get right now, in which case then we have full clear wreck ship. <laughs> something something, wreck ship is full cleared. All right, so another reason why I wanted to do this in the very specific order I chose. Is because we now are going to go to Norfair, but I want to go there in a very specific fashion. Um, we're going to go and refill our weapons real quick. Because there's a good chance we may be heading to Lower Norfair right after this. In fact, I'm going to... I'm going to pretty much guarantee that's what we're going to do. And, uh... We're going to want ammo. Mostly because uh, without Wave Beam, our Charge Beam power is not really going to be that much more powerful than... Um, it's not going to be that much more uh, powerful than Super Missiles as far as fighting Ridley. So, might as well have the ability to wreck shop. So we're heading down this very specific way because there's three checks. They're going to be on the way. And it's going to be faster than... Well, literally any other way. Um, there's, like, one other way we could possibly do that might be... Did I ever head to the left side of... Uh, I might not have. I might have, but I might not have. Oh, no, I did. Okay, good. Yeah, because that's the... Sorry, I, I thought I may have missed an item in Old Burn Star, but... No, it turns out I, I did just fine. Although, now I'm being silly here. So yeah, there's three checks down here, and... It's rather convenient to just get him now. Half magic is fantastic. Half magic now makes me much more confident in fighting... Uh, Mothra. So provided... So when we do eventually go back to um, Link to the Past, which actually may be a while, uh, between that and the Master Sword, we could just absolutely wreck, wreck Skull Woods. Uh, we're... Boo. Uh, we're still waiting for a good way, a better access into... Um, uh, the the dark world, so we're not gonna go there immediately. Screw attack. Poof. Screw attack is gonna turn um, lower warfare from something that was gonna be very annoying to do into something that's now gonna be pretty trivial. Because screw attack is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Not only does it kill basically anything it touches, it also makes you invincible to a lot of things. Well, messed up the messed up my run there, but whatever. We'll take it slow. There we go. That was what I was trying to do until I horrifically failed. So 
So right now we also do have Meridia access. Uh, and we can do actually quite a bit of Meridia, but we can't actually beat it because we don't have the speed booster. If we get the flippers at some point, though, we can, we actually will have the ability to beat uh, Dragon. Or get to and beat Dragon, I should say. Due to a warp that is present in the Dark World that connects to, Mer to the back half of Meridia. So that's something we're going to be on the lookout for. All right. So we're going to actually take a, a bit of an interesting route through Norfair. Because we're going to do something that's going to make it look like we're skipping like a ton of things. And that's because we are. But we're going to be back to um, get them later. Because it just so happens there's a more convenient route and exit from Lower Norfair. That just allows us to do that. I feel like there's not a whole lot more 50 rupee checks, but not entirely certain. And since we have everything we need to absolutely handle Lower Norfair, there's no reason to do any of these checks right now. Let me just do this. That's over there, just 20 rupees, so don't gotta worry about that. Bad movement, bad movement. That room right there, by the way, is a reference to um, the original Metroid, because that's where you initially come down in Snorfair. And also where you will respawn when you inevitably die in Norfair. <laughs> All sorts of fun, really. So here's a nice rare circumstance where we're defeating Ridley before before Dragon. And actually incredibly early in the game, all told. We're only, what, an hour 30 in? It's not bad. Yeah, once again, we have literally everything we need. Um, there is a portal in Link to the Past to access Lower Norfair. In fact, we're going to dip into it here in a second. But uh, in normal cases, if you go the route I'm going, you it does require the space jump. Not only so you can actually get up and into Lower Norfair in the first place, but this Chozo statue here does not activate unless you have the space jump. There's a specific flag that is set that uh, allows it to activate when you get the space jump. Other fun little things here is that I think five years ago, it was discovered that if you go through the store and hold a certain button combination, hello, Tempered Sword, you will actually activate a cheat that people think is a debug code in order to get basically every item in the game. I don't know if it works in the rando. I've never tried it, but... Also, say hi to Gold Teresa. Say hi to explain the he heck out of Gold Teresa. Turns out there's like a nice magic pixel you can stand on where uh, you'll just not take a hit and you can just shoot straight up. The other way you fight him is you just shoot super missiles at him and he grabs a super missile out of the air to show how tough he is. And then you just shoot him with a bunch more super missiles while his belly's exposed. So there we go. What's up? Oh, I didn't see. I think I was just missiles. E-take. Okay, I'll take it. Justifying me not getting that E-take earlier. Really justifying me not getting that E-take earlier. So this is the portal I was talking about. And this takes you to Misery Mire. So, no actual need to be here. Uh, we can't actually even do anything. Because we don't have the ability to access Misery Mire, but there's three checks here. And it's just silly not to come here and do them. You know, I was about to, I was about to comment that I actually have very little health right now in Link to the Past, but I guess, uh, I guess the game was reading my mind. So, don't have to worry about that now. Uh, there's one more check we can do over here. 
We're gonna go to Checkerboard Cave. And see what we can get. Absolutely nothing. Now that we have Charge Beam, additional Missile and Super Missile packs are completely useless to me. Um, right now, I'm at the, like I would be at the verge of like wanting just a few more, just because you need quite a bit to defeat Mother Brain. But yo, with the Charge Beam, that's not an issue at all. All right. Time to go through the Lower Norfair Gauntlet. Um, the game is set up so that logically you could actually get through this just with the Morph Ball Bombs. And of course the other prerequisites that you would need to survive heat. So, you know, uh, your Gravity Suit and Varia Suit and all that good stuff. But, um, actually I think Gravity Suit may not be required for this. But if you use alternate access from Misery Mire... I've had to uh, do actually quite a few scenes on stream where I've had to go through this with Morph Ball Bombs because I don't have Space Jump, and it's as painful as it sounds. It's the absolute worst. Really don't need any more health at this point. Any more health I get is actually going to waste time. Love it when I shoot so good I shoot through the wall. And don't break the blocks. Oh, I should have jumped. I always forget about that on the, in this room. Oh well, not a big deal. It's not going to waste that much time in the grand scheme of things. Such as I have high jump. High jump, you almost never get high jump in scenes, I've noticed. Because <laughs> high jump is only required in a very esoteric set of circumstances that's almost always negated by speed booster and... Uh, speed Booster, Morph Ball Bombs, and uh, Space Jump. Space Jumping without uh, the High Jump Boots is incredibly annoying, because you don't jump very high at all. But it is technically, uh, technically not required. Most of the time. There is a couple of, once again, a couple of esoteric circumstances where it is required. Just as Norfair Access, for instance. And I have had seeds where it had been required. Okay, so far, nothing great in here, which is unfortunate. I was hoping to get items that would allow me to just straight up... Basically straight up beat uh, Super uh, Link to the Past. Because I'm basically two items away from Go Mode at this point. Uh, I just require the hammer and the titan's mitt. But, um, and both of those are required to get Gaz Tower access. As well as beat a few dungeons as well. Uh, technically, I also need flippers, but I have ways to solve that problem with fake flippers, so it's kind of whatever. So yeah, we're we are deceptively close to go mode in both of these games. Uh, no matter what, though, I'm going to need to get either the speed booster or the um, or the flippers. I can't uh, can't beat the game without either, without without both. Oh, just because um, we need backup Meridia access. That was really stupid. Why did I do that? He was pogoing. He was being he was being very nice to me, and I did not take him up on his invitation to really hurt him. Um. Oh, I thought he was thought he was done. I thought he was trying to grab me, and he was, but just not in the way I was thinking. Okay, I don't want to use up all of my super missiles. I need a couple. Yeah, Ridley is of zero concern. <laughs> If you can't tell, I find it to be a pretty easy boss to beat, all told. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, oh man. Oh, little short. 
So get a few more checks. I think we got, what, three more checks? One, two, three. Actually, we have four checks left to do a lower. And once again, the items I'm hoping for are speed, either speed booster, flippers, titan's mitt, or hammer. But titan's mitt probably being the most important thing I want right now, if I had to choose. Because Titan's Mate gives me alternative dark dark world access. As well as um, allows a few more dungeons to be beat. Uh, specifically Ice Palace. I can just fake flippers and do Ice Palace real quick. I tend to have just, like, the worst luck actually getting the items I need in, um, in Lower Norfair, though. Mm, bad bomb lane. I try to lay the bombs as far over as possible in order to reduce lag. And, uh, sometimes I do fail. These key hunters here, by the way, are incredibly dangerous. Uh, if you come here under-equipped. They take a lot of hits to defeat, and they're just incredibly strong, all told. Nothing interesting there. Ha, bad jump. Okay, let's see what we got here. Beautiful. Exactly what I wanted. <laughs> oh man, this... This, you know, like I was saying earlier, getting a bunch of items at the start of the game typically denotes a seed that's going to be actually very evil. But, um... Oh, hey, we got to use this item. <laughs> actually, that's not true. You can do some really silly things with that. But, uh, we appear to... <laughs> we appear to just be in luck, because we got bow and we got, um... Got titans, mid. And that's, uh, that's pretty ridiculous. <sighs> so I, have to, I do have to take into consideration how much I want to do checks in Norfair now. Because I can do quite a bit in, in Link to the Past. I can beat two dungeons. Just straight up. And I think that's probably the play I'm going to do. I'm going to do a few checks here and there, but I'm, like, I'm not going to go down and see Krokemeyer, for instance. Because uh, there's just no real reason to. Yet. I'm sure. I'm sure Crocomire will give me a reason. I'm sure we'll be missing speed booster or something somewhere. But we are going to do at least a few checks. We're in, we're going to check the speed booster location because there's. Oh right. <laughs> I'm so used to doing this section without the screw attack that I stopped there so I could lay a power bomb. But that's unnecessary. We're also going to check Weavey. Which is right over here. It's too bad that, um... We're going to make Croc... We're going to leave Crocomire in a lonely state because... Oh, there was another 50 Ruby drop. Because with Charged Plasma, you can do some hilarious things with him. Like, shoot him once and he just, like, just nopes out of there. So money is not an issue. So we're going to do this, and then um, we actually are going to go downstairs very briefly, but that's just so we can loop. Is it actually worth doing that, though? I was going to say get Grapple Beam, but with Plasma, we can absolutely wreck Dragon. Maybe not necessarily in a way that's... Thank you. Maybe not necessarily in a way that's quicker, but in a way that's not necessarily that much slower. Because, um... Uh, Dracon is not a boss that you're supposed to face with the, with the Plasma Beam. You're supposed to get the Plasma Beam afterwards. And thus, he doesn't he doesn't like dealing with that. In fact, the fact that we have um, the X-ray Scope allows us to do, um, do the uh, Microwave Beam on him. Where we basically he perform a... Mmm. Well, we are in go mode now for, um... 
We're in go mode now for uh, Super Metroid. I think you're correct on that, Worms. My apologies. <laughs> she's not used to the... Uh, <laughs> she's not used to the plasma field. There we go. Krokemeyer did nothing wrong. I agree. Krokemeyer friend. Krokemeyer makes me sad he was cut from... From uh, Metroid Zero Mission. Oh, that's also... Eh, for some reason I forgot. Good thing that enemy always drops super missiles. Otherwise, this would be very inconvenient. So once again, there is still a... Might as well. Uh, there's still a decent chance we might have to go and see Krokemeyer. It's getting exceedingly unlikely. But it's not impossible. So plan is, is we're going to go back to Link to the Past. Uh, and we're going to... Do Skull Woods. Is it better to do Skull Woods first or second? Uh, we're going to do Skull Woods... This is actually a legitimately tough question. I'm actually not sure if it's better to do Skull Woods first or do Ice Palace first. We're going to do one or the other. I'm going to think about that for a second. Uh, it's probably negligible. But the point is we're going to do both of those. And then we're going to go to Meridia. And, um, give Drake on the business. Oh, we're going to do something really quickly that I think I could have done, like, at the start of the game, but I forgot that I had Lamp. We're going to go ahead and rescue the old man so we can... Bonk. We can activate the warp point. I didn't do this early because I didn't have a um, sword. And I was going to do dark room strats. Which were going to be absolutely unnecessary. Watch him give me the hammer and I get incredibly sad. Not that I necessarily needed the hammer, but, you know, would have liked it regardless. Oh, okay. We're going to do Skull Woods first, because I now realize why. I'm going to want to do Smith Chain. It is indeed dangerous to go alone, so, you know, good thing I didn't go in that cave. That old man. He would have told me that. He would have saw me and been like, Son, you know it's dangerous to go alone. What are you doing? Alright, let's go and, um... Oh. Switch over that over to Silver Arrows first off. Silver arrows are not always the best thing to use because they create a ton of lag. But, um, they're usually the best thing, your best option. So we're gonna go and beat Skull Woods. And then we're gonna do Smith Chain real quick. I'm trying to think if it's quicker to do Skull Woods, save and quit, then backtrack and do smith chain or or what if it's faster to backtrack eh, maybe i don't want to do smith chain in the first place yeah you know i'm not gonna do smith chain screw it smith chain is for babies and i ain't no baby I already got the Temper Sword anyways. Ouch. Alright, got our key. So we don't have to go through the other room. That's nice. There are two keys in chests. There are, of course, the map, um, map, compass, and big key. And that ends up leaving only two checks in this entire dungeon. In Key Sandy, this is a much more valuable dungeon in general. Because... You don't really... I think you don't actually need any of the keys and chests to get through it. If you do it right. <laughs> Which is incredibly useful. It means you can basically go in here anytime. In fact, you don't need the big key to beat the... 
beat the dungeon either. Big key is the only thing the big key does is unlock the big key chest here, which in vanilla is required because you need to get the fire rod from there. Uh, which actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think you technically even need the fire rod in order to beat this dungeon because you could just. I think you can light the uh, lanterns later or the torches later quick enough with the with the lantern. So yeah, actually the big key is completely useless. <laughs> but yeah, uh, because of that, it turns this into a place that has like, mm, don't want to use that. I want to use this. It turns this into a place where like, it only has like two checks and they're kind of all over the place. Or potentially could be all over the place. To a dungeon that has seven checks is insanely valuable. It's a big reason why I like playing Key Sandy, for that exact reason. Ouch. So, this key that's in the upper left is the big reason why you don't need any keys in this dungeon. Because that locked door up there leads to essentially nothing. It's just like a little bonus room. You can get some goodies. And there's no chest up there. Alright, we have technically two more checks left. We've gotten every item, so that's a check that's worthwhile to get, unfortunately. Which is too bad. That's too bad, because that's a slow check. It's a slow check that I also don't remember how to get to half the time. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. The good news is it's not as slow as it could be, because we have the mirror. So I could just mirror away. Oh, I forgot I got in the key. Yeah, okay, well. Oop. Didn't actually need to do that. And in fact, I guess I could have parsed that out now that I think about it. Because it's possible you could use all other keys before you get there, and the game does, does not want to softlock you. So, that's my bad. Yeah, so the way this room is technically set up, you're technically supposed to use the fire rod here. Which we're going to, because magic is not an issue right now. But I think you technically can do that with just the lantern. You just gotta be really silly about it. So, Fire Raw is the way to go here. Um, although, I think the Tipper Sword technically does only, like, two damage less or something like that. Normally, this requires, like, a full um, full magic bar, which is why um, I was uh, very reluctant to come in here. Also, for the longest time, I thought that was a face that was on that moth. But it's not. That's just the moth's body. Which, I do know that some moths... Um, have evolved in such a way that they have face-like patterns on them. But I literally just discovered that, like, for myself a couple days ago, and felt very silly. Alright. So we can now do Pyramid, so that's good. Um, do I want to do Pyramid now? I will do Pyramid later. Oh, I just realized it's going to be really annoying to get to Meridia. Actually, that works out. Right, because I don't have Hammer, so I can't do... I can't go to Meridia the typical way I don't want to. Oh, well. Um, I'll have to use the portal that's in Kakariko Village to go to the Dark World and then double back. Which, once again, it's a little annoying, but... Oh, no, that's not true. I don't have to do that at all. I forgot. I, I have the portal, um... I now have a portal open up if I save and quit into Dark World. I forgot I have flippers. I don't have the fake flippers. What am I doing? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, 
Actually, we're going straight to Meridia, because I just remembered I don't have Hammer. <laughs> and because I don't have Hammer, I can't actually access... Well, I, I can get in, I can do a decent amount, but I can't actually beat the dungeon. So instead, we're going to Meridia. Oh man, is Hammer going to be the item that we're going to have trouble finding? I bet you it is. In fact, let's do a prediction. Let's have some fun. Well, Hammer Beetle to find. All right. Got a prediction going. Oh god, go away, go away, go away, go away. Yeah, why not? Let's have let's have some fun. I don't know how many people are watching right now, but I figure I might as well make it fun for y'all. Assuming y'all aren't already having fun. I guess I should also specify for go mode, but eh, whatever. Oh, speaking of, hey, we're in Meridia. What are these freaky looking things? That are very annoying to get past if you don't have um, a spring ball. Ooh, somebody went high for no. Look at that, look at that. Also, I just realized that I think that technically is the last item I need, which means I kind of screwed over a bunch of people. So let's modify that slightly. And say, like, that's, that's like the absolute last, like, progression, or, hmm. Yeah, I should have thought through a little bit better now I think about it. I messed that one up. Mm, indeed, Oki, okay, indeed. Alright. Let's go ahead and mess, uh, mess up Dragon. Oh, I forgot. I accidentally... Accidentally did a beam combo. That's great. Yeah, it would have been faster if I got uh, grapple, but whatever. This is fine, too. Oh, accidentally got grabbed. Oh, you're not dead yet, huh? Huh. You're doing a good job of surviving. Oh, there we go. Got you that hot off-screen hit. That doesn't happen all the time, because beams and all projectiles literally disappear the second they, f they go off-screen. They have no staying power at all. Flute? Alright. Flute's good. 
Flute's unnecessary, but Flute's good. Yeah, I think literally... I think literally Flute doesn't actually do anything good for me. I did go, yeah, I did go over here, right? Okay. A couple things we can do. We're gonna do one check real quick. I guess we'll go ahead and leave. So we're still on. We're still looking for hammer. Yes, I did. It's a very nice ocarina. It summons a duck, and everyone knows I like ducks. Okay, heart, heart container. It's not really worth. Ooh, I have to keep in mind the spring balls available. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're actually gonna go up this way and do plasma and all that. Plasma, it's a little slow. But here's my logic. Um, I have to do additional checks right now. Because we have to find that hammer. So, like, my thought is we're going to go this way, just check Plasma, and it will end up going back half of Meridia. Or the, the false entrance of Meridia. Exit out, go into real entrance of Meridia, and then just knock out checks. Because doing the checks in the front half of Meridia is not that... Not that time could... Oh, don't want it, buddy. Uh, not that time consuming in the grand scheme of things. So I think that's, uh, I think that's best to do. These guys real quick. What do we have? Super missile. Okay, not useful. Yeah, so hammer is turning out to be the one thing we need to desperately find. Isn't that great? I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, so the reason why we need hammer desperately is because we need to beat the ice palace and the palace of darkness, which are both required. Um... We also need to access uh, Ganon's tower as well. There is literally no permutation in the game, uh, seed logic or what have you, that does not require the hammer. So yeah, that it, it does leave us in like a slight pickle because of that. But it is what it is. The second we get the hammer, though, we can just we can just do everything we need to do. Yeah, because we have the bow, we have the lantern, we can do eastern, no problem. Oh, stood up for some reason. There we go. All right, so. That was false entrance. Which I'm pretty sure that's not, not what it's officially called in the community, but you know. Now let's go into the real entrance. If we're really good with your inputs there, you can actually do I think a, I think it's a free and perfect input, but you can actually jump on air there and not fall down. You can also just be closer to the sides as well. That solves that problem too. Okay, so good. That's another uh, speed booster check that we don't have to worry about. Just five bombs up, uh, five bomb upgrade there, so we don't need that. Okay. 
kind of wish I actually did a quick transition back and forth. Because then I could have just save scummed and got out of here incredibly quickly. Oh no, I would have been saving regardless here in a sec. Alright, so 20 rupees here. What do we got here? Just. Huh. I uh, want that, thank you. Ether, we know, is required to get into Misery Mire. Uh, it's unknown if we actually have to go into Misery Mire yet. God help us if we do. Oh, I should have taken an opportunity after I beat Skull was to do Pedestal Check. Oh, actually, no, Pedestal Check's useless. Um, I was worried that Hammer would be on Pedestal, but in order for that to be possible, Turgwalk could not have been a, a Pendant. So we don't have to worry about that. Because you need the Hammer to access Turgwalk. Because the Hammer is incredibly important in this game. Alright, so there's three checks up this way. And then we're going to have an additional... Um, additional few checks coming up here in a sec. Um, if we don't have anything here, um, then I guess we are going to go see Krokemeyer. I'm gonna grab it for safety. You don't lose time for getting additional health in in Link to the Past, other than you know, the other time taking two grabs at health. This is unlike Super Metroid, where you will lose time after a certain point because of Mother Brain. Not really a significant amount of time. It's, I think it's not even a second per e tank. But you know, optimizations they exist for a reason. No, oh, that was enough to kill. I'm kind of surprised by that. All right. So here's where we're going to save real quick, because we need to go into two separate pits. Both of these pits are one way. Both of them contain two items, though. And as you can imagine, it's time consuming to come back around. Thankfully, we only need one item. So if Hammer's in one of them, that's actually a good thing. It's not like normal times where I'd be like just kind of upset. Um, is there any way I can actually check what the item is up there? Maybe not. There's also a couple items up here. Oh, I can check one of them. Okay. So, heart container. And then there's one that's just a mystery that requires speed booster. I did save, right? I did walk in there and save. I did. Wait, I did, right? Hold on. I'm pretty sure I did. I'm sorry. I'm being paranoid. I have a bad memory. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you do that in games where you like you wonder if you saved and you save and then like five seconds later you're like, wait, hold on. It's a really good pro ZD skit about that. Alright, so here are the two pits. By the way, we we're running out of progression items, because I already know where grappling hook is. Um I'm not gonna count the the boomerang, because you never need a boomerang. But I will count the Okay, so not here. But I will count the medallion. So we have what? And I'll also count Ice Beam. So one, two, three, four items. If we find those four items before we find the hammer, then the people who said it, if uh, that was going to be the last item I was going to find, uh, you're going to lose out. So, there is a possibility we do need to grab a grapple hook, even though I did purposely not. Because there is... There is one check we can do in Meridia that we're going to skip right now. 
because it's the slowest check in the game. But it does require Grapple Hook to even do. So that's going to see our good old friend Shack Tool. Alright, forgot. Nothing, okay. So, yeah, Meridia was uh, all kinds of useless. That's okay. Uh, we can just exit real quickly, go down to Norfair, and um, we're going to go see our friend Kraid. And we're going to actually have another good mock ball instance, because there is a quick way to get down to Kraid, and it's not the... It's not the weight you can normally take. Also, surprisingly low amount of health. It's not an issue, but it is notable. I am thinking that speed booster is not required to beat the game at this point. Just because we have not found it at all. And that's usually an item you find very early on because of the amount of checks you could potentially need to do. It's actually going to be kind of awkward to do now that I think about it. Oh, I had it! I had it and then I got diagonaled. That sucks. I'm actually not really that used to doing... Um, um, Mockballing to my le to my left as opposed to my right. Uh, we're gonna actually do a couple things. I'm gonna turn those off because I think that's affecting my jump. Okay, mess that up. Oh, I keep standing up. What the heck? That is not a mock ball. So the reason why I want to do this is because there's a check on the ice beam location. It normally requires speed boost to get. And it actually is a faster way to get the Krokemeyer. There we go. It took longer than it needed to, but... It was on the verge of actually not being worth it, but we did it. I do want to find Ice Beam at some point, by the way. Ice Beam is not required to beat the game, because you can deal with the Metroids with power bombs. Um, a very paltry amount of power bombs that I have at this point, by the way. But, uh... You do... You don't technically need it. Okay. It would have been interesting if uh, Hammer was there, because it would have meant that speed booster was actually required. There's one more check where it would confirm speed booster required. It's going to be this next one. I don't think that's going to be a, the case, but... It's this one right over here. Nope. We don't need to worry about that, because we... Right. I forgot something. It was still worthwhile to do this, but um, if I really wanted to actually go that way, I would need Speed Booster, because <laughs> you're supposed to run down Speed Booster blocks, and it sets you right outside of Krokemeyer. Oh, well. I was worried for half a second I softlocked, and I was going to be very sad. But thankfully, that's not the case. So once again, if you're just joining us, we're 
really on the lookout for one more item, and that's the hammer. Or otherwise in go mode for Super Metroid. And, um... And as far as Link to the Past, there's nothing else that is required. It is raining very heavy outside right now. To the point that I'm not sure if that's hail or not. Wait! Oh, we can't go this way either! Oh, this is interesting. So... That's a one-way gate there. I might as well grab grapple. Oh, I can't grab. Gra I can't get grapple either. That's right. Grapple's locked too. So grapple is locked behind wave at minimum. Oh, how interesting. Okay, so let me explain. Crocomire can be accessed one of two ways: either with speed booster or with wave, uh, wave beam. We uh, don't have either. This is normally not an issue. Normally, you get speed booster super early, so it's like whatever. Or, you know, you just you get Wave Beam early and you just go and do what you gotta do. In this particular situation, we have neither. Now, there's still some checks that we can do. Oh, I'm gonna be so sad about this that I wasted time coming down here. I basically just piddled around. Oh well. It is what it is. It was the right play when I was having very little knowledge. <laughs> Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Dark World. And um, clear out the right side. Because we can do that now. Titan's Mint is what allows us to do that. And while it doesn't give us access to too much more than that. Still allows us to do quite a bit. I second guess myself. For some reason, I decided it was not the first door, but totally is. Oh, also another, another fun glitch time. Uh, Japanese 1.0 version. If you walk against a block and use the mirror, the block just disappears. You can also use the hookshot the face through blocks as well. But, um, you know, both are good. So if we... Excuse me. If we don't get what we need here, we have to go into Pendant Dungeons, unfortunately. Uh, the first pick is going to be Swamp Palace. On account of just the amount of checks you can get from it. It sadly just is the one that makes the most sense. It's also arguably one of the more inconvenient ones to get to, too. Ice Beam! Great. I'm happy I've got that, at least. Boomerang. I'm less happy I got that. Although it allows me to do some, one very specific trick in um, Ganon's Tower, so that's cool. Not a, not a particularly useful trick? <laughs> it does save time, but, you know. Not in a way that matters. Okay, so we have the medallion to do that, so that's good. Um, trying to think. What's the quickest way to get the Swampy? We're gonna warp back, because we can at least start Smith's Chain if we go to Kakariko. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna do Smith's Chain after all, it turns out. And then use that as an excuse to make our way down to Swamp Palace. And hopefully along the way, we're gonna find the hammer. And if we don't... 
And we're gonna be sad. Oh, my tracker finally updated. That's nice. <laughs> Look at that. Look at all this stuff that I've done and items I've gotten. Yeah, sometimes it's instantaneous, I noticed. Other times, uh, not so much. Being sad is bad. I agree. Don't be sad. Unless you have a really good reason to be sad, in which case, you know, sometimes you gotta be sad. It's okay. Alright, so Smith's Chain allows us to get two items. Uh, we're gonna be actually getting an additional third item. Because um, of shenanigans we can do. But first, let's do this. What you got? Interesting! Okay! Kinda wish I did this sooner now. So... Let me explain why that might be bad. We can now go to Crocomire. Um, there's a bunch of now ancillary checks we can do. So... I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Whatever! <laughs> Who cares? We in go mode, everybody. Also, let's pay out that prediction. <laughs> so, we technically... Hmm. <sighs> I guess I'm going to consider Hammer not being the last item that we needed. Because we tech, while well, we did know where, hmm, but we could access, uh, we could technically access the grapple hook or grapple beam. So the only item that wasn't left, that was a check. Oh, there was one item that left that wasn't a check. It was the the mushroom. So no was going to be no will be the winner. It was technically not the last progression item we could we had to find. So, congratulations! I don't know why I'm slowly walking out of here. I should be saving and quitting, but... <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> Let's not be slow about... Oh, I actually should have... Uh, I actually did make a slight mistake there. I should have gone and gotten the chicken. Or the... Whatever animal that happens to be duck. I think it's a duck. It looks like a duck. Because it would have been slightly quicker to get to um, Palace of Darkness and Eastern Palace that way, but whatever. It's a minor time loss in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so... Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do Ice Palace first. Because we're gonna do Ice Palace, then we're gonna warp out, and that'll keep us in the Dark World and put us in Palace of Darkness. We're gonna do Palace of Darkness, then Eastern. And uh, then we're going to go up to Gans Tower. That's our exact order of operations. Doesn't really make many sounds, honestly. It just, just I mean, it makes fluttering sounds. This is a really good type of duck that's um, in the lake right now. It's been there since the summer. Like, it's a pretty large flock, too, of, like, at least 30. Uh, they're not Mgansers. I forget what they are, but they actually chirp. They're ducks that chirp, and it's really cute. They also are very, very small and skittish. They're very, very cute. And I feel bad every time I walk past them, because they always, like, bail. So Ice Palace used to be my least favorite dungeon in the game. And then I learned glitches. And then it became one of my favorite dungeons. And we're about to demonstrate one of those glitches very quickly. 
the second I get up here. There we go. So we're going to do Icebreaker. Icebreaker's a fun little thing. You line yourself up three pixels away from the wall. Then you push the block a little too far, and you get sad. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So what you're doing is you're putting the King of Samaria block in such a way that you actually are between the small pixel between the King of Samaria block and the wall. And so when you push the block up or down, it pushes you through the wall instead. Because it needs to put you somewhere that isn't inside a block. Isn't that fun? I think that's fun. And it's a really easy glitch to pull off. Like, it and Heropot are probably two of the easier game-breaking glitches you can do. Which makes me sad that I didn't pull off Heropot earlier. I'm gonna be practicing like mad now because of that. Okay, so... Why am I heading down the stairs? I need a big key. That's why I'm heading down. That's why I'm still checking these uh, things. Okay. Went through the long, wrong door. There's another chest you can get, and I always forget how to get to it. <laughs> but it's uh, it's not that way. Spoiler alerts. Ouch. I do need to manage my health a little bit better here, because Cold Stare can absolutely wreck you. Uh, Cold Stare being the boss of the Ice Palace. Hey! Huzzah! Okay, we don't really need to come down here, but we're going to anyways. It's called, hey, if I can get another mail or a better sword, that's great. Otherwise, I'm not going to really worry about it. Okay. So we had the exact amount of keys uh, I needed to get through here. We do need a little bit more health, but thankfully our powder's going to come in handy for that. Yeah, so normally you need to go, like, do a couple loops in this dungeon, use the hook shot to, like, you know, traverse around and, uh, Get it set up so you push a block down that you can push onto that switch. But the King of Samaria makes it so that's uh, not necessary. It's also the reason why King of Samaria sometimes is required, because sometimes the um, final small key is actually going to be on the boss. And if that's the case, then the Samaria is required to beat this dungeon. And hey, Cold Stare! Cold Stare is a fun boss. Um, one, because he's kind of tough. And two... If you have Bombos, you can do funny things to them. Uh, to be specific, uh, you can just use Bombos once and automatically melt him, which is nice. Can't actually hurt him with Bombos afterwards, but... Never really quite grouped up the way I wanted him to. If you can group him up, you can just... hit him once with the... Um... Oh, yeah, so this was, um, King of Samaria's, uh, theoretically required for this dungeon. That's interesting. I uh, normally group up, you get him with the Fire Rod. And since the Fire Rod lingers, it hits all three. So that's the most efficient way to, to beat Cold Stare. Alright. Let's go ahead and head to the Palace of Darkness. So the reason why we're doing Palace of Darkness first is because we can just do Palace of Darkness real quickly, and then we can immediately warp out and go to... Um, that's not the Palace of... Way to Palace of Darkness. Uh, then we can immediately um, mirror out to the White Light World and go to Eastern. Because they're located at the same location. So it's quicker. Let's see, I'm gonna come up here real quick. And of course, accessing the Palace of Darkness requires 110 rupees, which thankfully we have uh, plenty. Got Kiki the monkey. It's a good monkey. Okay. 
It still has the same restrictions of the original game. Um, technically. Well, let me clarify that. Because normally you get access to it after you defeat six dungeons in the vanilla Link to the Past. The thing is, is, a, is the specific flags are different. The flags are only for the fifth and sixth dungeons. If you could theoretically beat just the fifth and sixth dungeon, those would show up. The red bomb would show up, for instance. Uh, which is why uh, you have red crystals in this game. If you just get the two red crystals, you get access to the red bomb. So, I guess technically no. Not in the spirit of, but in the rule of, yes. So we do need to find the big key, so that's the reason why I'm kind of traversing around this way. Second we find the big key, though, we can just go ahead and head directly up and finish this off. All right, and here's one of the... Ah, what am I doing? Here's one of the reasons why you needed you need a um, a bow. These Goyas are invincible. Well, the red Goya is invincible if you don't have the bow. Come on, Biki. Boo. Come on, Biki. Boo. There's like five keys and chests in this dungeon. This is another dungeon that um, is not particularly exciting. Well, it's more—it's actually more exciting than um, uh, than school was because there still are a significant amount of checks even on a standard seed. But um, actually, it's better to go this way. What am I doing? Uh, what was I saying? Right. It has, um... It still has, like, a significant amount of checks, but when you do a key sanity seed... All of a sudden, all the five keys in here are removed. Which means it goes from having, I think, like, three or four checks to having something like a nine. It is ridiculous. So it's an incredibly valuable dungeon to go to. Although you're very limited to where you can go because of said keys. So it, it can make it a very interesting play sometimes. Also, the classic use a key to get a key. Love when that happens. Alright, so... This is looking like it's going to be a case of, um... Jeez. Case of this game being, like, literally the, uh, last chest we check. There you go. Oh! Oh, you jerk! Uh... Okay, let's... How do we do... Because I don't think... Yeah, you... Oh, well. Definitely can if you eat the bomb off that way. All right, bomb son him. I forgot about that. I have shockingly little health. <laughs> Just noticing that. That's a problem. So there are two chests to our left, but they're inconvenient. I'd rather go this way and hopefully find the big key. Actually having to take it a little safe now. Hey, big key. Fantastic. Let's get the heck out of here. Hey, power bombs, that's useless. Especially now that we have the ice beam. Oh, I gotta. Oh, right. Just do this multiple times. Hey, there we go. Perfect. And then we can reuse this. Perfect. Yeah, 
use that and just that little glitch right there. Just throw down a Samaria block. Kana Samaria is incredibly useful, by the way. You, you really wouldn't think it would be. And then it ends up being just like an excellent item all around. Hmm. All right. So yeah, uh, this is looking very... There's a very good chance this is going to be a sub three hour. Which is nice. I, I don't remember what my record is. Had my part-time written down somewhere, but, um... Or my PR. But still, this is, uh... This has proven to be an incredibly quick seed, and... Had I decided to do Smith Chain earlier, we probably could have made this an even quicker seed. Like, a guar guaranteed sub... Uh, sub 3, but... That's the wonderful thing about hindsight, right? It's 2020. Like, the fact that I didn't have to go into a single pendant dungeon is really, really surprising. That's very, very rare that you don't have to go into at least one dungeon that isn't required. Also, hi, Helmosaur. Fun fact about Helmosaur, you can actually damage him with bombs and destroy his um, mask that way. It's not necessarily quicker, I believe? But sometimes it's less about being quicker and just proving you can do something. Okay, can I hit you before you go nuts? No? Nope. Wow. I'm get. I was. My the diagonals were really messing me up on that one. I was like strafing away my shots. It was bad. So this is where all the power bombs were, apparently. Ah, seed's going really well. This has been a very quick seed. And I thought it was going to be particularly evil, but it wasn't. Um, we could have gotten a hammer earlier than than I necessarily did. And it was our uh, it was our go item, but it ended up not being that big of a deal. I was shopping in the snow. Yeah, we're um, literally one crystal dungeon away from going to Ganis Tower. And that's where the new fun... The new fun happens. Always quicker to go to the left side than the right side, by the way. Because the way, um... The way the door on top is situated. So, Eastern Palace, oddly enough, is oftentimes one of the last dungeons you beat, and that's due to, in large part, because of the items that require it. It requires the bow and the lamp, and you think that wouldn't be that big of a deal? But given that the bow and lamp aren't required for a lot of other things, you typically get it a lot later than you would, uh, than you would other items. Some reason I thought Tipper Sword was gonna do more damage than it would than it did. Oh, nice. Well, that happens to the best of us. Also, don't actually have to move these guys. You can just step on the switch from above. It'd be really fun if the randomizer also randomized which switches you had to hit. And by fun, I mean oh no. <laughs> So this is the part that actually requires the bow. It's actually not the boss, because the boss can be hurt with the fighter sword. Oh, mm, I wasn't far enough down. Embarrassing. Randomized dungeon transitions. Link to the Past Rando does technically do that. Um, there are some thoughts about putting it into um, uh, the SMZ3 Rando, but... Apparently, it's a lot more work. <laughs> All right, well. Time to go see a Ganon. And say hi to him.
What about all rando transitions? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, literally all transitions. Except for, like, screen to screen, like, in the overworld. Um, I don't believe that's been implemented, but yeah. I know, like, even, like, going into, like, individual dungeon rooms has been, like, messed with. Oh, both Metroid and Zelda. Um, I'm not sure. I know that some work has been put into, like, a door randomizer for Metroid. But I don't know how far along that is. Not offhand, anyways. Uh, this is not quicker. <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah, I was thinking about going and using the Turtle Rock entrance, but that's not that's not faster. This is faster. Checking, yep. Just wanted to make sure that I somehow didn't miss something. Because that'd be mighty embarrassing. Yeah, so after we do this, it'll be a pretty easy straight shot to... to good old mother brain. Yeah, mother brain's not going to take long. Um... Depending on how long it takes to find the big key in Ganon's Tower, that sub-15... That sub-three hours may be in danger. Just sort of depends. It depends on what happens. Like, I won't say I'm not confident in getting it. But I'm open to the possibility of failure right now. So we're gonna play a game called... How long is it going to take for me to find the big key? It's everyone's favorite game. You play it by guessing how many chests I need to open before I find the big key. Because all you need to beat this dungeon is the big key and the small key. And getting a small key is very easy. It's not an easy prediction to do on this one. Although I'll try something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Over, uh, over, under. We're gonna do more than fifteen, or no, um, more than fourteen, fourteen or lower. Start your predictions, and I'm going to delay a minute. For at least a little bit of time. Well, here, I'll walk down here and get this key. That's what I'll do. Wait, it's not a key here. Is it a key here? It's not a key in either one of these. I'm thinking of a, I'm thinking of a different pot. I can't wait to, like, lose the sub three by a minute because of this. Well, actually, technically, I'm probably going to lose the sub-3 regardless. I forgot. I started this timer late. All right, well, never mind. Whatever. Who cares? I'm trying to keep up with this, um... With these spikes, I'm not doing a good job. Ah, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot. That's yeah, fine. So, so far, we're two in. Oh, hey, the mushroom's here. Let's collect it. Because why not? So, yeah, mushroom was hella not required to beat the game. Yeah, that's the key I was thinking of. Fun fact, you can occasionally push that block in a way that doesn't trigger. It's uh, real fun when that happens. That's three. Four. Although we got plenty of keys now, so that's good. 
five. Hey, six! Hey, you won a fabulous trip to Boca Raton. Congratulations, Worms of Can. Dude, get hype. Alright, so, like I said, you need at least one key to go upstairs. Uh, otherwise, you're running a risk of not being able to beat the dungeon. Uh, thankfully, we have four, so it's, uh, it's a real, real case of, like, whatever going on here. Hmm. There we go. Prop salt. Uh, this is also another check for, um, for the bow as well, because of these red Goyas. The bow is always required regardless, because you need to be able to actually defeat Ganon. And that requires the bow, unless you, uh, use, um, some absolute chicanery in order to accomplish that. Oh, I got this really off script in a way that could get me in trouble. Okay, now we're all right. And here's the big key. Yay, we're good. We now don't have to care at all. It's nice that I've like, done this dungeon so many times at this point that it's like not really much of an issue. Uh, for safety reasons, I am going to come over here, though. Get these items real quick. There's, yeah. I am actually playing pretty fast and loose right now. Um, although I have a bottle, I have nothing in it. And I've uh, never bothered to get anything up for that matter. Oh, this these set of rooms. Yeah, this is going to suck. Um, I kind of wish I had Bombos, but I don't, so... Ouch. How... How rude. How rude! Yeah, these rooms are arguably some of the most dangerous in the game. Oof. Oof! Which way are you gonna go? Okay. And this one, we're just gonna do this. Oh, huh. I thought I actually killed him. Guess not. I know Bombos would have been great there, but don't have it. Ugh. It just takes um, two fire rod shots in order to um, in order to defeat a worm. Which is why I was trying to use the fire rod there. Didn't go too badly, though. That could have gone worse. Okay, there's magic in one of these, right? Yeah. I just need just, just a hair a bit more. Like, magic's probably not going to be an issue, but, you know, I just do have to keep that just somewhat in mind. Oh, I should have grabbed... I'm gonna grab that heart. Oh, wow! Normally, um, you can do at least one transition. But I guess not. Before items disappear. Okay. Uh, for safety reasons, just to make sure that I, um... Keep enough magic. We're gonna constantly... Nearly... Fall off of all those, and... Use the lamp. Oh, wait, I, I think I get a full magic here anyway, so it's, no, it's not necessary. Hey, whatever. Sometimes you forget. Is 
So here's the set of rooms that require the key. Um, out of curiosity, I just want to see what's in these chests. Hey, a bottle. Isn't that nice? Ooh, that wasn't close enough? I'm actually a little shocked by that one. I don't know how I dodged that. Happy I did, though. Um, give me your sweet magic. Thank you. Hey! So we actually didn't even need to get extra keys, because the... That chest normally contains a key. I'm glad to have had it. Got it anyways. There we go. All right, let's see what's in Validation Chest. A chest that, um... Was never required to have progression items in it. And it was a grand, uh... Grand old nothing. All right. Time to say hi to Hag. Okay, got it too. Good. Ah. Tried. Okay, I got him with one. That's good. He's giving me a lot of blue balls too. Ah. He was in such a bad position. There we go. That... I mean, that wasn't a great fight, but I'm gonna take it. Oh, I'm out of beer. I'm sad. <laughs> hey, it's our duck friend! He came to help. Probably upset I left him in that statue, but you can help. He knows what he did. Okay. Let's go mess with Ganon. Join me, hero, and I shall make your face the greatest in the dark world. Or else you will die. Ah. Uh, good old Wanda Gamlon references. No, that face is evil, right? I forget. Hmm. <laughs> I do have to be at least a little careful. Because I have, like, no potions. And thus, dying would be a legit bad thing. I mean, dying would be a legit bad thing regardless, but I have no way to heal. That should be enough, I think. Ugh. Okay, we got everything we need equipped. Okay, we should be good now. Barring some shenanigans. Whoa, that was weird. I don't know what the heck happened there. I sliced and got pushed back. So it's like he had an active hitbox, but he just couldn't take damage. Huh. Come on. Come on. I did find arrows in the light world. So what I did there is cause a glitch to happen. Uh, that glitch keeps uh, at least one of the braziers always lit. Which is really nice. Uh, that was really dangerous. Glad I did that. Yeah, if you light one of the braziers before um, the other goes out. You, you keep in a perpetual state of litness for the other one. 
He does. He does indeed have one frame of vulnerability, which is what allows you to actually hurt him with um, with the Master Sword. Because you can do a spin attack in order to hurt him in that uh, one frame of vulnerability. This is how you beat this fight without silver arrows, which is a pain in the butt! Alright. So that's um, it's Link to the Past. Let's beat Super Metroid. Also, I... No, my cursor. <laughs> no. Probably not gonna happen. <laughs> I, I knew that the sub free was a long shot, but I'm very happy with this time for being rusty and all that. Like, we got a very favorable seed. I didn't feel like I was, like, wasting too much time looking around. Made some dumb plays here and there, but for the most part, I don't feel like I did too, too bad. So I'm happy. Um, Slice Beam already pre-equipped. It is great. I forgot if Ice Beam gets pre-equipped. I think it's only Plasma the Space that aren't. If you grab them in, um, Link to the Past. This is so they prevent a really glitchy beam from occurring. Alright, time to... You should! A lot of, like, the cooler Link to the Past glitches, too, aren't that difficult to pull off, too. Like, fate, your own, your fake flippers, your hair robots, and all that. It's actually not that bad. Um, I have not. Yeah, I played a little bit of uh, Parallel Worlds, and there was another, like, early Link to the Past ROM hack that I, uh, I briefly touched. Very, very briefly. That was in a very incomplete state. But other than that, no. Like, it was, like, during the time I, I was, like, really potentially into all that stuff. Like, it was, like, so early on there really wasn't much. And, uh... And, yeah, by the time I dropped off and, like, started just, I don't know, doing other things? I don't know. I... Is when, like, the crazy stuff started happening, from what I understand. So, yeah, from what I understand, it has a pretty robust mod scene, though. Like, not... Not quite, like, Super Mario World robust, but... What does, really? Let's put me back there real quick. All right. Echoes of the Past and Link to the Islands. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard of either of them. Oh. Hmm. Where, where are you now? All right. Time for the baby Metroid to come and be a baby about things. Try to see if I could pull it off. <laughs> oh, happy now, Kuma. I, I've, I've done that once or twice recently. I was just like, man, is there any crazy stuff going on? <laughs> oh, yeah. People make some nuts stuff. It's really great. I am really excited to show off um, this Super Mario World ROM hack I found, by the way, on Thursday. It's gonna be a bit of a surprise because I, I feel like it's a, I feel like it's better if it is, but uh, it looks really really good. Which, by the way, that's what we're doing next Thursday. I also finished up my Mega Man Zero over, uh, my Mega Man Legends overlay. So, also look forward to when we get that started next week. Very excited to play Mega Man Legends. Hell of a game. Hell of a game. Oh, nice! Very good. Also, good to know that there's, like, issues. Emulator issues, I'm presuming.
rack. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, I'm afraid of Rymac. Oh, really nice. Alright. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. It's Mother Brain instantly, instantly comes up now. They changed that. That kind of actually freaked me out a little bit. Causes Mario to play like Castlevania? Oh, weird. I like that. I just have a lot more health to play around with now. I don't want this much health to play around with. I am excited about a game tomorrow, Boris. Nintendo Direct is going to be great. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I'll be interested to see his reaction. Okay, don't want to take any more hits here. See, perfect amount of damage. Oh, I think he's talking about the Direct. That's my guess. Which, yeah, um, I, I think I am going to live stream that. So we can all react together when, yeah, when he add another Fire Emblem character. Add another sword character. Those monsters. Oh no, the baby. The baby. Okay, no, seriously. No, if they added Wind Waker Ganon? Oh, man. I, 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 I'm sorry. No, I'd be on board. I'd be on board. Dual swords just going crazy. I mean, my obvious choice is I, I would like either Zero or... Um, what's it called? Uh, uh, or Geno. Gino, however you want to pronounce it. That'd be my choices. Oh, really? It kind of kind of soured your experience on it? Uh, yeah. It, it has a bad end game. I did. I know I when I watched your stream last, you were on the end game. And boy, that's a... That's a... Oh, that's me not having focus on the window. <laughs> Poor baby. I mean, we could have... It's possible to do a glitch there that keeps the baby alive forever. It also keeps Mother Brain alive forever. And coincidentally, you alive forever, so it doesn't... Doesn't really solve any problems, but... Hmm, true, there is. Probably up up there or with you on that. Like Breath of the Wild is Breath of the Wild may be my favorite Zelda game of all time, which is kind of nuts. Like not even nostalgia is allowing. For once, I didn't want to hit down. Apparently, isn't that what the heck? Can I please hit down? I'm sorry. What? That was so strange. I don't know what was going on there. But anyways, yeah, I, I I think I'm with you. I think Breath of the Wild is probably my favorite, and then Majora's second. I'm one of those people who likes Majora's Mask. Fight me.
Yeah, same, same. I did have like a lot of like really good feelings of exploration from that game. That tab scratched a lot of nostalgic issues. <laughs> It's really nice that, um, even Base Super Metroid, to get rid of that one platform that's on the bottom so you can just go directly up. Anyways, as a tradition, we are going to rescue the animals. We, we, we ain't gonna be like that. <laughs> Thanks, Scabby. Exactly. Don't report me, Scabby. Don't report me. They saved. They're saved. And there we go. Time. So, technically, it's not 3 hours and 10 minutes, it's more like 3 hours and like 13 or 14 minutes, but let's say 3.15 and call it even with an odd number. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you. This was good. Uh, for a um, kind of a de-rust seed and whatnot, uh, this, uh, this went exceedingly smoothly. That was a ridiculous opening. We got, <laughs> we got the vast majority of Link to the Past items right at the start of the game, which um, is incredibly abnormal. Usually that leads to some bad situations like fighting Fantu with three energy tanks or something similar. But we had plenty of health for that as well. So that went that went incredibly well too. Uh, we did end up in a, with an item hunt at the end, but it didn't last long. Made some couple of dumb decisions, but I always do. 102 Super Metroid clear time. Definitely could have been lower. We could have had a sub hour on that. Unfortunately, we, um, we made the choice to look through Meridia and Norfair for, for a hammer. And it turns out that it was not there. So, yeah. I, I don't think that was the wrong play, because it was like, it was either that go for just a couple of ancillary checks in, in Link to the Past. So I, I would have made that choice every time. So, that's not a big, it's not a big deal I didn't get that. I could have gotten it earlier if I did backtrack from Skull Woods like I was debating, but once again, hindsight. Either way, um, 3 hours and 15 minutes is good. I'll take it. And we'll see what our sort of unofficial time is going to be at the end of this. Uh, it's going to be unofficial because it doesn't take into account all the saves and quits. You know, obviously you can't record time that it doesn't get saved, so it, it's nice to look at, but whatever. Uh, what else? I think actually we have statistics coming up, aren't we? Okay, let's look at these statistics first. Okay, it's 329 door transitions. 16 minutes indoors. 32 seconds aligning doors, huh? That's a very quick criteria, by the way. Nine minutes? That's kind of ridiculous. All these other times are pretty normal, except Meridia. Meridia is a little long. 31. That's actually a very quick Turian time. 8 minutes, 19 seconds? It's usually more like 9. Huh. One special beam attack that I did on accident? Yeah, first order was found quickly. Pegasus boots found within 5 minutes. Uh, Flutes bugged out because we found it in Super Metroid. That's just unfortunate. It does record the time. But yeah, important items found quickly. Beat four bosses with the fighter sword. Beat four bosses with the fighter sword. That's actually kind of surprising. And in four with the tempered sword. One death that unfortunately I can't say um, was intentional. Right? That was a, that was an unfortunate death right at the start. Very few transitions though. Huh. Oh, that's actually a pretty accurate time. Three twelve. Did they... Is it saving more often in the background now? Because that's a very accurate time. But we've definitely saved and quit 
Actually, you know, now that I think about it, I don't think I um, save and quit out a whole lot. I don't think I went to like a lot of useless rooms and save quitted in order to just transition back. Hmm. So actually, that's pretty good. Well, rad. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining me for this. Um, just to finish up some final thoughts, the plan is to do another key sanity seed. I, I do want to show that off. Um, uh, sometime, not next weekend, and probably not the following either, but at some point. Uh, reason why it's going to be on the weekend is because it's going to take like five hours to do. <laughs> so I need the time. Oh, thank you, Kuma. You have a great evening as well. Once again, we're going to be back on Thursday at 4 p.m. with uh, a Super Metroid ROM hack uh, called Peach's Adventure. So hopefully I'll look forward to y'all seeing you there. If not, um, y'all have a good rest of your week, okay? Take care now. Oh, 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 oh,